now you're nervous now it's a lot for you but get out on that golf course and the first three or four holes is so important for him if he can settle into the round and this opening tee shot here we go then fasten your seat belts could be a bumpy ride this afternoon I guarantee you it will be an exciting one. Okay, Tommy, here we go. Hello, hello. 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 This is game number 37. On the tee from England, Tommy Fleetwood. <laughs> Played beautifully yesterday, bogey free 66. Could have been lower than that. Missed a couple of punts. On the tee from the Republic of Ireland, Shane Lowry. Yeah. Also bogey free yesterday. What a round it was. 63 on Saturday for Shane Lowry. To take a four shot lead into Sunday at the Open. and 17 out of 18 yesterday and if he can keep doing that the way his putt has been working he'll be a very hard man to beat both these players remember trying to win a major title for the first time up to the green at number one and a bogey putt for jb holmes he was out of bounds off the tee remember We leave the first hole behind for a little bit and we go to the second green. So Lee Westwood missed a short putt on the first, but this is for Eagle. And this would make up for it. Looks <laughs> Kevka, meanwhile. Just trying to get the pace right. Another one comes up well short. with a caddy on a day like this is so so important keep talking to each other up ahead jb holmes this is for a double bogey oh, yeah. and well Shane Lowry. Meanwhile, to Ketka Parpat. Drop shot for Brooks. Well, the 
seven groups have played that hole in 11 over par. It is a bit of a brute, I think it's fair to say. Nicely in the fairway. 91 to go for him. Lowry in the rough. There's his ball. And Jay Townsend is going to be following this two. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I can't say it's a bright and sunny afternoon, but it's going to be an exciting one here. It's about a two and a half club win into his face and from the right from 216. He's drawn a good lie here. He can get the club in the back of the ball. It's a long way even to the front part of the green, about 190. Oh, anywhere but in that bunker. Oh, it's going to leave that horrendous 50 yard bunker shot that nobody, not even the pros, enjoy. Jordan Spieth is in there and did manage to get up and down, all he had to hold apart from about 10 feet. I had a chat with Ian Finnis after the round yesterday, and he said Tommy couldn't have been happier with the way he hit. He said he flushed it. The 66 he shot yesterday was as high as he could have shot, was how they felt. It gives you a great confidence, especially after a nice opening tee shot. 191 up the hill. Probably uphill without any wind. It's going to play close to 205. Add in another 20. It's going to play about 225 up this hill. Going to land it on the bottom part of the green, probably, and try and chase it in. Amazing playing 220. We saw the bottom of the club there. Going with a six on. Oh. What a six on. Now, well, there could be a sudden turnaround here. He's taken his opportunity there, hasn't he, Thomas? He knows he can make a big move here. Oh, absolutely. And he'll come out firing. He'll be come out saying, all right, well, I'm going to attack this golf course early on. I'm going to ask the questions of Shane. You know, that's what that's what it's all about. They might be great friends off the golf course, but today there's no prisoners out there. It's all for themselves. There'll be some steam in this one. Kepka having dropped a shot at the first. Anxious look, bunkers down the right, and he's found one of them. Well, it's come out of his pitch mark, but that's about all you can say about that one. Justin Rose turned his second shot over here on the second. So this is what he's faced with on his third. Beautiful shot. Nicely pumped into the bank part. Well done, Justin. Tee shot from Westwood on the third. Don't know about this. Back in the first, he has buried the second and the third Lee Westwood to get to nine under. not too close to the lip, 54 yards, it's all blind. He's going up there and had a look to see where he wants to land it. If he could fly it up to the top level, it'd be a pretty good shot into the wind here. Anything within 20 feet is a very good effort. from that range it's going to come out biting low like a doberman just so hard to hit it Larry will have that for his part at the opening hole let's go up to the second uh, where 
Justin Rose has a putt for a birdie four. That was it, just kind of stopped a bit and the blade turned over. And on the right to left button, that's always going to leave you low side. Just Jordan Spieth on the fourth. Apart. Just hit it a little bit too hard there. Through the break. Back to the first. Lowry. What do you reckon, Jake? Well, I think you're nervous. I think it's a uh, pretty straightforward putt, and you're just hoping to get down in two at this point. And holding it would just be phenomenal. But it's definitely three puttable in circumstances here. A little bit of moisture coming out of the air, starting to uh, get the greens wet, so that definitely changes things. start from Lowry let's go to Lee Westwood fresh off those birdies in the second and the third out of bounds in play the fourth as well all the way down the right hand side oh, oh, Westwood quickly down for the tee that's an absolute ripper in the drive oh. every man in the field would Pay good money for that one. Well, Tommy rolls this one in, Jake, and Shane's is going to be very, very long. Well, it goes from four to two very quickly, doesn't it, Thomas? And just the, the emotional toll will be huge on Shane. It'll be a huge bolster for Tommy. He couldn't lay it down any better. This is almost straight in uphill. It's just about hitting it nice and firm and holding the line here. Uh, you'd have to say it wasn't the most convincing stroke. It wasn't the stroke he was putting on the penalty in 15 minutes ago, and it's understandable. Last round of the Open. Are the nerves jangling? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you've got to remember, he's nervous as well. It's not only Shane that's very nervous. Thomas will, Tommy will be very nervous as well. So he can't get started in his round. But you feel that this is a big putt for Shane just to walk away with a little bit of, oh, I got away with one here. Well, just the fact of holding a good putt even for bogey and only losing one shot will be a bonus. Several new tees around this championship course since they decided to bring the Open back to Portrush for the first time in 68 years. And they've added some length and there's some meat, some new bunkering. And a couple of new holes as well. Let's go to Kepka, third shot. Remember, he drove it into the bunker off the tee. 178 to go. A shot at the first as well. Let's go to Ricky Fowler at the third. And Sam Torrance is back alongside Tony Johnston and myself, Dom Hollier. Thank you, Dom. That was a, a torrid first hole there. That's a great shot there. <laughs> Tommy the Fleetwood holds his back in the first. Shane misses. It's a three-shot swing, and now it's only one. I mean, he'll be boiled by that. 
Shame. Good two part, good bogey of such a thing. And Fowler actually after the double on the first, birdie the second. So if he holds that one at the third, he will undo the damage and get himself back to eight under par where he started the day. Yeah, yeah, I, I second tee, Fleetwood. Yeah. Into a right to left win, more so right to left at the moment. But the uh, third bunker up the right and the one up the left is out of play today. Cool conditions, damp conditions. Ball's not going to fly as far. I think you want to favor up the left side, being that bunker's not in play. Three wood here for Fleetwood, Jake. That's a bit of a surprise right there. Certainly taking those two bunkers I spoke about out of play. Fleetwood there, that's in the thick stuff. Big tee shot here for Shane. Going with the driver here, it's going to ride it on the wind, hit a little draw, get some extra yardage. As much as anything, a good one settles his nerves. Well, on that two in the second cut, he won't get the green from there. The pressure to him is a tough day for everyone, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is, and that's what it is. It's all about the pressure, how you cope with it. And he's somehow got to sort of block out the exuberance of the Irish crowds. They're just desperate for him to win. Justin Rose looks like he's found some proper salad here. Acceleration going, that's the main thing. She's done. Might have jumped a little on in that long wet grass. Just a, like a mini flyer, really. Hard to control. World number one. Have a look at this shot he's got left. Bogey the first. This is his fourth on the par five. to the drop shot at the first for Lee Westwood. Good drive at the fourth. Fowler, great tee shot at the third, albeit the first. Birdie the second, can he birdie the third? He's second. There's not much he can do. That's fantastic. Double bogey, birdie, birdie. Back to level. Told you he was a fighter. Man, that's brave stuff. Heck of a par at the second. Yeah, just scrambling in the fairway, don't get the terrible line. Hacked it out, went out left, and then now this to try and save his par. Now it's going to be a drop shot, but the error really from the from the tee forced the issue the whole way down. Bogey, bogey start. Kept it back to seven under. He is eight behind Shane Lowry. Justin Thomas also got a longish par putt at nine. Mm. 
four under for the day coming up that hole. Tony, that's great golf, isn't it? The final day of a major. Oh, especially in these conditions. It's fantastic stuff. JB Holmes. <laughs> Good second putt. Manages a par five. Tommy's drawn one of the worst lines I've seen all week. I'm actually in it. He'll be doing well to advance at 80 yards, and that's hitting a down slope. All right? Yeah. Precise, Tom. There's some cross bunkers up there in the fairway. He's 167 to reach the first of them. I don't think he can hit it that far. He's coming out at about a 45 degree angle, it looks. So just trying to push it up 70 yards. Done very well. Sounded like they got quite a bit of club on ball there as well. So well done, Fleetwood. He's back in play. Shane hasn't drawn a good lie either. He's 280 to the hole. He's 150 to the first of the cross bunkers. All right. He's 180 to clear the cross bunkers. Some bunkers up there, short right of the green. That's the angle you'd want to go. You'd want to lay this up over to the right at the first of the two bunkers short of the green. It'll give you a better angle to pitch in. He's got to dig this out. Not a great lie. management yesterday was supreme when you get under pressure like this it's very easy to start making mistakes Justin Rose par putt at the par three third and putters gone a little cold this morning Westwood to get to <laughs> ten to this point though to be honest with you he's got 198 he was lucky yeah, the ball stop where it did a couple paces further would be on a downhill side slope wind coming straight off the right here holes cut just over a little shelf so that wouldn't that was a little bit far in it yeah if you did a normal shot on the two yeah even the right edge of the two Tom yeah that's what I like I like that all good yeah just that same small range one yeah. they're talking about the two or right edge of the two here we're going to swing it in on the wind, land it on the bottom level, just let it release up there. Key here is get a putter in your hand with the next shot. This is not an easy one by any stretch of the imagination, and that's without the circumstances. strike which is not unusual for Tommy Fleetwood we know JB Holmes has already played here at the th par three third he's a little bit short of the green he's Kepka oh, 
it's not going well, is it, for the world number one? Bogey, bogey start. He'll do well to get up and down from there. He's played a lot of golf in Europe. Kepka, he knows what these conditions are like. It's not strange to him, but it's a strange start. Shane has got the perfect lie for the shot. A little bit of a grassy lie in the first cut of rough. 74 yards. Not the greatest of angles. So look for him to take it a little bit right, but he's going to land this on the lower level. This ball's going to want to release. I don't see this grabbing. Have you shot? Yeah. Your captions for the wind to it. They say it's only nine miles an hour. Is it dropping? Where is that taken from a valley? Oh, the wind's not dropping. I can promise you that's coming off the right. Tommy Fleetwood there as well. We told you that Holmes was short of a third. Can only see the top three feet of the pin. That needs to settle down. Oh, waited a long time for that check, but it was worth it. Not often you need a yard is when your second shot in the par three. First away here with a birdie punt. Not only first away, Fleetwood's on the same line. He'll be watching closely here. He's going to give a good read to Fleetwood. As this loses pace, I think it's going to come a little left to right. But it'll feel like bogey bogey. Because Shane he could have had the power to get home in two if he had the four of the drive, perhaps. Can't be thinking like that, though. Shot by shot, hole by hole. Yeah, it's a stinger. Only three under in the par fives. There are the birdie holes out there, so as well he's played the rest of the course. A lot of teamwork goes on here between Ian Finnis and Tommy Fleetwood. Ian's a good player in his own right, which really helps here. Tommy's super confident in his opinion and input. He watched Lowry's putt. Lowry hit a good putt, which makes a difference. Just fed off a little bit left to right. This is just a left edge putt. Two holes for Fleetwood, not converted either. He's got one shot back though. Well, we saw that uh, Brooks Kepka had gone over the back of the third. He's chipped up to here. Oh, 
Oh, well, well, who'd have thought? It's going to be three straight bogeys for Brooks Ketka to start his final round. The world number one, the man who has played so well in majors. He's been dominant in majors over the last couple of seasons. Out to Westwood at the fifth. It's a great hole to do. He can reach it very easily. We've seen Garcia drive it through the green, out of bounds. Shot, you get an eagle chance. Is this a little right? Or is the line good? Oh, it's just a little bit, isn't it? Oh, stay there, stay there. That's excellent, Lee. Excellent. Oh, it's not. Swift on to that little runoff area. Oh, not quite easy. No, okay. we're right, Dipper. That's why we're flagged. Maybe just stay on the fringe. Let's drop back a couple of holes to the third and our final two ball. Great look here from the tee. You see almost all of the pin is hidden behind a mound short right. Wind is coming off the right and I do have to say, gotten up to a higher area, the wind does feel like it's dropped but I'm looking at a flag Oh, maybe 200 yards away is really blowing in the wind. So I think it's kind of gusting right now. Dies, gusts, which is the worst possible scenario. Golfers don't mind a strong wind, but they don't like gusting because then it's a bit of luck of when the ball's in the air. Probably the highest point of the course as well on this third tee. Absolutely. This ball's totally exposed once it gets 10 yards off the club face. Not protected by that huge grandstand, which is full. Amazing atmosphere when ringing three and four T, which are all together in the rope lines. 180, wind off the right. Holes cut six from the right edge. Never easy when a hole's cut on the windward side of the green, especially both of these players prefer to play a right to left shot. Ah. Hates it. Short right, maybe. Oh, just right. Mm, cool. It's a tricky one, not impossible. Yeah, Sam, that's coming up and over a mound and then downhill to the hole downwind. There's a hair of helping most of it across. That's a shot shot. Be aggressive with this wind as it's flying. Exactly. Yeah. Alright. Now, if you were going to ask Shane just to hit a shot, his natural is going to be a right to left, but he has been very confident and adept at playing cut-up shots all week. I think he'll cut this up against the breeze. It starts to gust right now. on this shot. I think he was. The wind just turned it left at the end. Yeah, Bo Martin, a former Ulster Boys champion as well, so he's a decent golfer. Here's Rose, third shot now into the par four, fourth. Shot from there. Well, birdies at two and three for Ricky Fowler after that double bogey out of bounds at the first. He's got another chance here at the fourth. Oh, 
He's alongside Lee Westwood. So it's Lowry at minus 15, three ahead of Fleetwood. He's then three ahead of Fowler and Westwood. There you go. Then it's Willett and Rose with J.B. Holmes also at eight under par. Thomas Finau and Dylan Fratelli all inside the top ten. As the rain falls here at Royal Port Rush and the wind blows. And Tommy Fleetwood sizes up his second shot. Downwind here at the third. Not a lot going in his favor here, Jake. No, there's not. He's got some options. He's got a wonderful lie here. He's got a little bit of cushion underneath the ball if he wants to land it over the precipice of the mound and let it run away from him. He could pitch it into the mound. He could actually putt this if he wanted. I think putting brings in more variables because he, going up the mound, it's going right to left over the mound, or up the mound, left to right, over the mound, right to left. Too many variables there. If he's going to pitch it at the top or just over, he's going to have to aim about two. Oh, there's the putter. Oh, boy. This is interesting. So this is a big left to right and then right to left downwind, downhill. The wind is starting to pick up again. It had died down before they hit their tee shots. Wedge back out. OK, that's better. It's not that tight lie you get on the closely mown stuff. He's got a little bit of cushion here, which helps. He's going to go for the up over the crest of the mound. And it's downhill right to left. So he's going to have to aim this about three feet right for his pitch point. Father, it, it would have been nearer. It's a lie that Willett's got here. It's a wants to chip and release it to run up the green. Trying to go up the hill and back down. Come on, come on, come on. It's trying. More problems for Brooks Kepka, who started with three straight bogeys. He found the bunker from the tee. He's now playing his third into this par four fourth hole. Four. All right. All right. Third, up the hill. Pace was good. And he looks to be just sort of settling a bit into the round now, Sam Torrance. Absolutely. The, the, the first that was huge on the first green. Tommy not holding it. Yeah. Tommy holding it in the three shot swing with the other way around. It was just one. Westwood has been on a bit of a roll out there with a couple of birdies after a bogey at the opening hole. Missed the short putt. And he's done well. Oh, first time pressure on Fleetwood. He's missed two chances for birdie. This is for par on the third. He's three behind. Nobody making a well, not really making a move behind. Ten was the best when he started. Third place is now nine. Three greens. Is he feeling the pressure? 
There's an awful lot of it out there. Short walk just down the slope to the uh, fourth tee. We'll go up to the green at number four. I think about that five, and Danny Willett. He's got a birdie chance. Slightly downhill, Tony. Yeah, just off that little shoulder there. I think he would have, he would have expected to get his chip a little closer. It wasn't that far off the surface. It wasn't an easy chip. But if he pops this in, all is forgiven. This stays at eight under. One birdie, no drop shots to this point for Danny Willis. I can tell you that John Rahm has dropped a shot, another shot. He's four over par on his round as we go to the fourth tee and Lowry. Wind straight off the right. The first bunker is not in play today. The second one up the left, 270 to reach. Around about 275 to carry. And straight off the right. Yeah. What a t-shirt. Now that looked like the Lowry of yesterday, yeah. didn't it, when he was yeah. in full flow. His body language actually looks pretty good, and Tony, I agree, because if you're nervous, this t-shirt would drive you nuts. Even if, if you weren't nervous, it would drive you nuts, Jack. Well, it's just exponentially worse on a day like today. No doubt about that. Now, Tommy, it sets up well for both of these guys. Trouble's right. Their natural shot is moving it away from the trouble. So they should be okay. But Tommy, he's been nervous with the putter. I haven't seen it in his long game yet, to be honest with you. So there is one innovating tee shot out of bounds right. All those bunkers, wind off the right, hole shape right to left. Whew. Lovely. Great extension down the line. whips himself in the face with his long locks there doesn't he Tommy Fleetwood anyway up to five no birdie for Willett what about Lee Westwood Hello. three birdies in four holes after a drop shot at the first for Lee Westwood he moves to ten under and is five behind Lowry uh, oh, Frank, world number one bogey 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 start and he has to hold this for a bogey he hasn't experienced that too often, has he? The contention and a maze or a start like that. That's the view back down to the sixth tee. And this is Lee Westwood. today the fifth just behind him the first green they can drive the first very easily could be a heard something there Fowler and Rose are on the team behind them and into the breeze kind of helps him here for this front pin to stop it much quicker share of second place Westwood at the age of 46 hunting that first major title let's go to Fowler at the fifth 113 to go for the American well, 
honestly find that quite incredible. Ricky Fowler, three birds is in the trot. And didn't have a go at this green. I've seen people hit it to a foot. I've seen people eagle it. And he's missed the green in two. Andrew's putting so well. Don't bet against him holding that one. Here's Danny Willett at the sixth, playing with Lee Westwood. Lowry and Fleetwood are at the fourth and joining Sam Torrance, Dale Hayes and Doogie Donnelly. Thank you, Dom. What a pleasure for all of us to be involved in the final afternoon of the Open at Ralport Rush. Sometimes the final day drama comes early, some days it comes late. It always comes. I think today we can say it's come early. Yeah, I'd have to hit it like that. Yeah. So coming down where then? See there's a red and white umbrella. There's a bit of a back stop there as well. Oh, but I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a seven shot without a narrow. The walk just feels like a lot behind me, you know? Yeah. That's right. Now they're talking about the wind, they can't feel it down here in the second half of this hole, it's just lying by a big tall pine tree, and there's a house there as well, it's up on the hill. You know the wind's from the right, it's a heavy step. It's seven years ago, all day long, you know, one seven years ago, all day long. Oh, easy. Yeah, so say it's like five guys, five would help, it's more than that. Yeah, because it's just more shot, so. all right? Swirling down in the fairway from around those trees. They're talking about from five o'clock. So like they're planning on almost down <laughs> in the right to left. I think it's more straight across. The second yeah, shot on this hole is right. yeah. exactly in line with the T shot on three. <laughs> now it's going into the face up here, halfway to the green. Shot at a time and take advantage of the birdie holes. Lee Westwood closes within a shot of Tommy Fleetwood, but Shane Lowry has re established his four shot lead in the final round of the Open. Much of the morning spent discussing players you felt might make a move from further back. There were a lot of votes for players like Brooks Kepka and John Ram. Well, my friend, they're going in the opposite direction. Here is Cap Cap on the fifth. This hole is drivable today with a little bit of wind helping you. There's that big mound right in the center. It really depends on where your ball pitches. If it pitches in that mound, it'll stop short. It's a side of it, left. Well, that is, that is fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. Cap is back. Bad shot by JB Holmes as well. That was his ball on the side of the green. Two eagle putts coming up. Ahead at the six, the par three. Danny Willett with a long birdie putt. One 
under for the round. Birdie the second. Actually, Ricky Ball, Fowler's ball on the left edge of the green. What a start by Westwood, just as it was yesterday. Can he keep it going today, though? He used to put just inside that coin or that marker. swing from the right and this is the first time in the four holes they've played that he's putting first Shane will take a little solace in that uphill towards the end Very makeable putts in the first four holes. Ricky Fowler at the fifth. Down the hill. And how did that stay out? Well, if you thought that was a roar for the approach, wait until you hear spectators of this one drops for birdie Soul, it could have been such a big difference. This is <laughs> made an understandably nervous start, but that will settle him down. Five shot leaders are going ahead to six. Ricky Fowler. 174 yards today you've got to pitch the ball right up at the flag if you anything short and right it's going to catch that little valley it's very hard to make the path from there let's hope you are and his traditional final day orange the orange of oklahoma state university second easiest hole today the fifth one eagle already, 28 same birdies. Same, 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 exactly right. Got to take uh, advantage of the fifth and the seventh, Sam. The next three holes, you, you've got to play it at least one under, maybe two under par. Absolutely, it's both. 330 to the front edge, straight down wind, as they've done the three of the four days when it's been drivable with the wind behind them players in front have stepped aside the perfect line is just right of the bench behind the six which is left play a little cut shot here the driver the full driver can be too much right now wind strengthening at the moment he has three with two yeah, okay that's the perfect club he can go ahead and let this rip probably get it on the front part of the green be right be right did it every day so far. Be right, he says. Nothing wrong with that. Nice angle for his little chip shot into this pin placement, which is on the 
sort of left middle of the green. I think he was surprised that that came up short, Dale. He nailed that. Tommy definitely has the firepower to get there. He too has the three woods. It's a big three wood to reach the front edge, but it takes a lot of trouble out of play. I think with the three wood, if you don't think you can get it on the green, just a little bit left of Lowry's ball is the best line. It's a perfect line, Mr. Big Hump in the front. Ooh, right on top of it, this is going to be good. This is going to be better than good. This is magnificent. Should just nudge it over there. That's a great shot from Tommy Fleetwood Eagle Park. Thought that was going to come off the slope there. That would have been adjacent, as they say. A little bit of rain coming down, and it's going to soften up both the fairways and the greens. And then for catching the top of the mound, perfect. Maybe it's just the dampness that has stopped this ball from turning down and running a little further down that bank. Justin Rose, slow start again. Now eight behind. Get lucky. Making sure he's up on the top. Very difficult from front right. JB Holmes, lead at the halfway stage along with Shane Lowry. He's back yesterday and he's missed a birdie putt there. Holmes now on seven under double at the first, bogey at the fourth. Doesn't look as if it's going to be the man from Kentucky's day. He wears to at the par five seventh. Nelly's bunker on the right. We're trying to go just to the left of that bunker. That looks to be ideal. He can reach us into. Definitely from there. Uh, Brooks Kepka starts with four bogeys. There'll be no bogey on this hole. This is for Eagle. Eagle for Kepka. Back to seven under, started at nine. That's Gucci, bro. Gucci, bro. I wonder when he last pl played five holes without a birdie, without a par, and without a bogey. Sorry, he's had four bogeys. I'm talking birdies or pars. Kepka back into the top ten, but Shane Lowry leads by five. Final day of the Open at Royal Port Rush. Tough conditions today. Jordan Spieth's a couple over. So too are Cameron Smith, Matt Kutcher and Henrik Stenson down at the bottom there. Back in a tie for 15th. Justin Rose now win from right to left. This putt turns from right to left. We've seen a lot of players miss it left. It well, it's just hit it too far too hard. Grey and damp and breezy afternoon here at Port Rush. Not really a day to be down in that beach behind the fourth. Tanning, anyway. We'll come back to that. This is Ricky Fowler on the par 3 6. So his tee shot. This is for Birdie. This to get to 10 under. Joined Lee Westwood in third place. No, he's not hit now. Oh, dear, dear, dear. That's a poor one from Fowler. He is a delightful putter, but that was a bad one. Lowry has 43 yards straight down wind and it's been raining fairly steadily for the last 15 minutes. So the green is going to have 
some moisture on it. This ball would likely skid if you tried to land it on top. You're going to land this on the bottom, try and get it to release up to the hole. Go a little left, you play it off the bank. He chose not to. That's a good shot. I think it's the right decision not to use that bank with the, the dampness. It wouldn't run off as much as you'd like. And a rose for a par, the par three. Tied for second last year at Carnoustie. Justin Rose with two bogeys now in the first six holes, and his chances look to be receding. You know, this is for birdie on seven. That's his first birdie, no bogeys. Tony Fino moves up to eight under par. Such a consistently high finisher, Tony Fino, but still only one win. Incredible, back in 2016. He does well in the majors as well. Quite incredible. At the sixth, and that's a good par save there for Ricky Fowler. We'll move down to the par five seven, and that requires a good long drive from him, so he's able to reach a green in two. He's just hit his first green in regulation. Can he do it two holes now? Oh, oh, he certainly can. Yeah. He's hit the last green in the regulation, made eagle. He's done a lovely shot in there for Kepka. And he can go 2-2. Two, two. Uh, Westwood with an iron to this par five. Might just catch that bucket. Might have stopped short. That was a funny looking shot. It looked a lot worse on top, Tracer, didn't it? Like a banana it. slice. Fleetwood and Finnis use aim point technology. They said, oh, it's going to go about an inch and a half left to right, but it doesn't take into account the wind. Wind is coming from the right, might hold this up. Chance for Shane Lowry. Well, that's for three, of course. That was his tee shot there. That was for Eagle. Fleetwood. Wouldn't make a, a birdie look much easier than that, would you? Lowry's lead cut to four. Westwood and Fowler, third and fourth. Arguably the two best players in the world never to have won a major. James favor, aren't they? 22 out of 25 have gone on to win after leading by four or more going into the final round. You would expect that, I guess. Has to go five in front again. start but that will do him so much good he's back in control you might throw on the webcam there Bob yeah well, he's looking at the dodgy doogie what are you doing to us <laughs> it's lovely to lie up here wasn't it it's really dark and wet afternoon for the moment and that was the forecast and Westwood 
Lucky to get away with that at seven. Second shot coming up short of the bunker. Still make a pitch in front of that. Shane Lowry, of course, had a four-shot lead going into the final round of the US Open at Oakmont, and he said afterwards, the mistake I made was I wasn't aggressive enough. I won't make that mistake again. That is a ripper from Ricky. McIntyre on the last green. Four under par. Can he get to five? He will certainly can. That's a wonderful 68 for Bob McIntyre. Four bogeys, one bogey. He really is a star of the future. Scotland's next. What a first open for Bob McIntyre. And he also struck a blow for those that feel we shout four often enough. Well done, Bob. What a great week. Lying 11th now. Figure where will that finish at the end of the day if the wind really does get up, as they say. That's a beauty there by Danny Willett. Absolutely perfect. And another really good lefty. Been so long when Bob Charles was the only lefty that had ever won a major championship. And then suddenly Mike Weir, Phil Mickelson, Bubba Watson. Five, 30 yards past Fowler, who's certainly not short. Just a little right to left. Slider, tell you what, it's a good day for contact lenses out here. It's getting a bit heavier. Slightly downhill. Westwood after that good chip. This for his birdie at the seventh. To go to 11 under. Always looked a little bit too far left. Now that wasn't a short putt, but a short tesh putt. And he did miss a very short one on the first. But he has hold a few too, including a chip. No surprises to see them take a good look at this. It's almost just at the bottom of two complete, competing slopes. One off a big mound on the front right, and one over at JB's right shoulder. A horrid start for JB Hall. Two bogeys in double in his first six holes. Goes back to minus six. Danny Willett for his birdie at the par five. Nine under par for Danny Willett. Just about this time last year, Danny Willett had dropped out of the top 400 in the world rankings. Climbing back up again, up to 75. He'll go higher again if he maintains this form in the final round. been quite a long wait here on 6T, but well, the views are good, even Love though it is yeah. raining. Red and white umbrella there. Tom's pretty hard. Into a left to right wind, equal amounts, 174 to the hole, 168 to get over the false front. If you don't get it up, it's going to roll way back down into a little bowl. I spoke to Bowl last night. He says his mid irons have just been fantastic this week. That's another beauty. Five shots clear. Oh, 
that's what he has to do with it when he, he's got a medium to long iron if he could just put it in the middle of the green he's going to be in great shape his putting is on there's no question about that he doesn't need to do anything silly it is interesting man looking at you two guys you've both won any number of tournaments in this position now five ahead you don't want to go defensive you don't want to make mistakes of course you don't but he said the last time at the us open he wasn't aggressive enough doesn't want to start getting too aggressive here obviously but at the same time I think if you're defensive you're inviting trouble but you don't want you want to be smart too you want to be aggressively smart <laughs> yeah, these, these conditions are way worse than uh, when you play the open let me throw something else in there as Fleetwood hits this one this is a home game baby that wasn't that was against an American for the US Open huge difference yeah good point Jake Let's hope this is just a, a passing squall and it's going to improve again. The worst weather is supposed to come much later in the afternoon as we go to 13. Justin Thomas, 11 behind, make that 10. He moves to 7 under. PGA champion. Awful lot of birdies there. Fantastic. So Shane Lowry leads by five from Tommy Fleetwood, by seven from Lee Westwood. Danny Willett and Ricky Fowler both on nine under par. I can barely hear Callum counting there, David. Uh, Fino playing with John Rahm, who's four over par today. Fino one under. Yes. Good speed there from Fino. beauty unfortunately is going to be awkward having to go over that big mound but he can handle that Tommy's down in that bowl I was describing and doesn't have a great lie not much grass underneath it. a shot where you really like to be able to slide the club underneath good news is he has wing going in his favor but the club face Pretty open. He's going to try and slide it underneath. I forget there's a false front. Into it. Get it probably within eight yards of the hole in this angle. I guarantee it doesn't come back. Shot that is. Touch of class from Ricky Fowler. Downhill, the green getting more and more moisture. Wind coming a little bit from his right and helping. He's going to have some left to right, but not as much as he would without any wind and no water on the green. Possible. 
Visibly frustrated with his putter. Feeling this isn't important when he really does need to hold a couple of putts. He's going to put a bit of pressure on his playing partner. This for par. Very much been going Shane Lowry's way early on in this round. These are the important ones now. Seventy-seven to eight. Excellent shot, it. Justin Rose has missed his birdie putt here on seven. This is Ricky Fowler. He has never hit that one. Westwood, 163 left into the eight. That'll do. Yeah, he knows it. He's going left. That's certainly not a place you want to be for that pin position. He got away with one. Shane Lowry of Ireland leads the Open, five clear of Tommy Fleetwood. He's stretched his overnight lead by one after six holes. Lee Westwood and Danny Willett, both two under for the round, ten and nine under, respectively. Justin Thomas climbing into the top seven. Alex Noren is still there in the top ten. Good to see Alex playing well again. Been a poor season for the Swede. And how about the left-handed Scott, Bob McIntyre? In between calling out much more experienced pros for not calling four, he shot a 68. What a fabulous first open for the Scot. Francesco Molinari completes the defence of the Claret Jug with his best round of the week, a 66. He could probably sell that 66 to any of the contenders right now. Karadek Happy Barnrat finishing well, so does Jason Cockrack, 67 and 68 respectively. Two forty-nine. It's the number probably playing I'd say at least two sixty, even with a little help at the moment. The wind it's just really heavy conditions. Still rain in the air. This shot shape will suit him nicely, bending it around. Anything on that TV tower in the background. It's a great line today. Talking about that didn't show at four was Kyle Stanley, and he actually hit Bob McIntyre's caddy. Good man. <laughs> Not that that mattered. You shouldn't be hitting anyone. You've got to shout four. If you're not going to shout four, tell your caddy that's your job. You know? One of you has to shout four. 
Heavy target, yeah? Yeah. Well, it's an important part of it now to keep the equipment dry and especially the faces of the, on the drivers. These modern drivers. And get water in between. The face and the ball and they tend to just kind of skirt off to the right. Opportunity, third easiest hole in the course. Westwood for birdie. That's it. Settle for a par, the 46 year old. To the eighth tee in Ricky Fowler. Second of the two new holes here at Ralport Rush. Especially for this Open Championship. Shot Ricky! That's all right. Meanwhile, walking up the 18th, the sole remaining Northern Irishman in the Open, Graham McDowell. And what a welcome he will get, the son of Port Rush. He had to work so hard to qualify. And that's a week he will always remember. Every minute of it. Back out on the eighth screen. Has he done it? Oh, that was a beautiful pot there from Danny. think they can win it from here but they'll give every little inch of themselves to finish as high as possible got a really good read here of JB's part right to left not a lot to it
Same with Kepka. JB Holmes, first birdie of the day. Back to plus three, minus seven. Same score as this man. Fleetwood's drawn a terrible lie. Oh, swings over. A little bit more than 100 yards in front of him is the gallery crosswalk. I'm not sure if he can reach that. Goal number yeah, one here is get it in the fairway. Which way? Right up here. Right so that sprinkler is? Yeah. If you get past the sprinkler, you won't be on much in from there. Yeah. Just get on the fairway, Tom. Be strong. You want a nice descending blow here. This ball's really dug down in there. Descending blow. It's less junk in there between the club face and ball at impact. Thanks. And just approaching the crosswalk. Alongside the shoreline. line, 140 to the front of the green for Shane Lowry. Lowry has 255, 240 to the front edge, left to right wind, just helping ever so gently. He's going to play a cut shot in here, aim it left, just ride the wind. Easy up and down from there, or a good chance of an up and down from there. Everything's meant to be drawn. Will it with the iron of the Lions T? Starting to swing it again, Sam. Mm, strong, very isn't it? strong, yeah, very good. Such a lovely free swing as well. It's just a shame there's nine months till the next major championship. Yeah, there seem oh, to be many of the players happy about that. It's, it's a big gap between now and April for Augusta. Oh, Maybe they'll reconsider it. Seven forward, huh? I doubt it. Difficult next year, of course, with the Olympic Games, but really it's been done for the American sporting calendar. Westwood choosing iron as well up the night. Was last year in 1951. Max Faulkner, one of the really colourful characters of British and Irish golf at that time. There was no European tour, of course. Won £300. That was his first prize. And the next day he went off and he played in the Fathers v Sons cricket match at his son's school. 1951, Max Faulkner, whose son in law Brian Barnes, of course, went on to become a wonderful player in Europe. Famously, Jack Nicholas twice in one day. Always yeah, I like it, man. You know, lands anywhere front edge, it's going to skip. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Keep a left left in top. All right. Left edge yeah. is that seven ball. Yeah. 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 178 uphill. Most of the wind is from the left here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 170, maybe 169 to get it over the false front. Just play a little left of the hole if it slides left to right. Fine, but play away from that bunker. Oh, Tommy. Get lucky. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. 
Uh, hopefully that will run down to the base of the bunker. If not, that will be extremely difficult for Tommy. Another great chance for Lowry to extend his lead. If I had an 18 then, Graham McDowell, it's not been the greatest of final days. That's almost irrelevant, really. But it'd be nice to see him hold this for par. 2010 US Open champion. He would be followed by Darren Clark and Rory McIlroy as major champions from Northern Ireland. And those successes have had an awful lot to do with the return of the Open to this part of the world. Well done, Graham. A week to remember in all sorts of ways. Taking that was it. it all in. Sorry, Dean, I'm just going to say that reception coming up in the last would break the hardiest man. He and his dad, Kenny, played the, the great links as members of the Rathmore Club. Warm reception coming up to every tee in green. Everything's been playing in good spirit. Just to, in case you're wondering why the, who the rain just really starting to pour down. Why is, the roars aren't quite as loud as yesterday. Well, a lot of people are holding on to umbrellas today. You can still shout. Yeah, well, there's some shouting going on. Fleetwood's drawn a good lot. It'll be Lowry to play first. He's in a perfect position here because he's over on the left. The false front of this green is not in play, and he's got plenty of green to work with. A little bit of left to right as it starts to uh, stop bouncing and start rolling. This is a really straightforward, easy shot if it wasn't to climb around to the open with a big lead. thing for Shane, of course, will be that nobody's really making a run at him. The uh, players playing best of the chasing pack are Lee Westwood and Danny Willett, but they're seven and eight shots back. Fleetwood has the perfect lie for the shot. It's kind of a fluffy lie, not going to be able to spin it. Just plop it out on the down slope. It should run right to the hole. So Ricky Fowler finding this bunker. He's got lots of green to work with here. He's checked up now. The greens are getting a little bit more wet. And Lee Westbrook was in the bunker of the tee. He's just come out to here. And that wasn't his finest. What to do? Yeah. This certainly is a beautiful cut of Ricky Fowler. Looks like there's not much thought. I just pick my spot and I hit it on it. Feeling that this is an important part. You really don't want to 
drop shot on a par five. Well, they've now played the three easiest holes on the course in these conditions. The second, the fifth, and now the seventh. It gets a bit tougher from here on in. Well, just told today is the 11th. The first was actually the second hardest. 16 today. The long par three calamity is the third hardest. There's a lot of tough tests to come. This though for another birdie for Shane yeah. Lowry. Yeah. And it's turning into the sort of game that all those Irish fans have dreamt about. Six shots clear. And after that, now he starts. He's beginning to play some wonderful golf. He's got to stick at the sambos. <laughs> He's going to take some catching now, fellas, isn't he? Especially in these conditions, because even if he makes a bogey, it's more than likely it is. People chasing him will make bogey. Westwood struggling here at nine. This is fourth shot. He's alone in third position at ten under. He's now at best nine under, which means he's nine shots clear of third place. Shane Lowry. Well, this is trouble for JB Holmes. Your medicine and try and get it back in play. Tell you what, if I haven't been dead middle of the perfect, I've had the worst freaking lies. Well, Danny Wheeler would have learned a lot from Lee Westwood's pop. Good stab at this. Learned a very little about the foot he learned. Yet another good major for Ricky Fowler. I can't fault him for not putting himself in there. He does it pretty much every time, Ricky Fowler. Only managed to advance this about seven yards. Just like you said, Thomas didn't want to take his medicine. This is exactly what he should have done first time around. It was a rotten lie with number one, not much better with number two. Well, Lee Westwood is this for bogey at nine. into a three-way tie for third, nine behind Shane Lowry. Yeah, I think there's a bit of disbelief in everybody else out on the golf course as well. How does he actually keep doing it, Shane? Lowry's got the driver out here at eight, and the wind is really picking up. You come out of the That's valley where place. seven's yeah. located up on top of the hill. They can't feel it on the tee, but about 100 yards off the tee beyond, the grandstand, it is really whipping in their face and from the right. It's around 270 to reach that first fairway trap on the right. Down. Down. Ah. Ah, yes. That's found a little bit of trouble, that one, Jay. See how the lie is when you get up there. It doesn't look like a great lie. It's on a upslope and ball's going to yeah. be above his feet. Tommy, that was a great par at the last, but he can't afford great pars at this point. He's got to give himself some birdie opportunities, put some pressure. I mean, it, 
I'm not very good at math, but I'm pretty sure there's only 11 holes left. Watch it! Watch it! Watch it! For the man in second place, but it's good for the man that's leading. Watch it! Keep on left! 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 Bogey of the round for Danny Willett. Back to just one under for the front nine and eight under for the open. There's how it looks. Shane Lowry after seven holes has a six shot lead over playing partner Tommy Fleetwood. Then it's another three back to Lee Westwood and Ricky Fowler. Tony Finnau and Danny Willett both under par for this final round. JB Holmes and Brooks Kepka both over par. Justin Thomas moving into the top ten. So too Alex Noren, but they're a long way back. No move from Justin Rose. He's three over today. And a great first open for Bob McIntyre. 68. He's currently tied 12th. And Francesco Molinari concludes the defence of his claret jug with a bogey-free 66 to finish inside the top 20. No move from John Ram or from Henrik Stenson. I think we're looking at a pretty limited number of players who could win this Open. Long part on the green for Kepka. Not having a great day so far. Good to help. The power. Started with four bogeys, even with fifth. Three powers after that. Grouping of Willard and Westwood are heading into the back nine. Nice. Just chugged that a little bit on the left, down the left. Good lie there. That's that kind of day. It's wet and it's not very warm, around 17 degrees Celsius. That's the low 60s Fahrenheit, not exactly a Northern Irish summer. Look at the skies out there behind him. It's getting really dark out there now. Six years old, late, and absolutely a brilliant performance for him to be here. He doesn't play as much as he used to. He doesn't drive it as hard his golf as he used to, but he's still here, and he's still trying his hardest in the biggest championship in the world. Couldn't agree more, Thomas. We're all big fans of West End. What he has done for the European Tour and for European golf over the last 23 years or so is quite remarkable. Yeah. Dale's back with us. You have the shot, mate. Where's your... Where you? And Jay Pardon? as well, of course, Today's is out there following the uh, final pair. Yes. And not the nicest yep. conditions you've had all, all right. season, Jay. Well, I like this in the open. You need one rough day just to check your character. He's got a good lie, but well above his feet on an upslope. 203 wind howling off the right, so that bunker's in play on this line. Do very well to get down in two from there. 
stop better than being in that bunker. Fleetwood is blind to the green. He has a 154, and the lie is poor enough going into the wind. I don't think he can get to the green. Now, if he goes to the green from this angle, there's a massive, deep gully. We're talking about going at the low bunker. I'll just put a club down like a... Well, I was thinking 52, maybe. I think it's a bit better than the other ones. I know I... You never know with the 52. It gets within 10 or something. And I know, uh, with the pinners though, it's not, the pin's right back, so I don't want to hit. I mean, let's get it back in play. There you go, just trying to get it back in play there. They don't want to go down in that uh, in that valley of there. So at the bunker, anything short of the bunker is the right play. That sets up a good angle in for the pitch shot from the third. If you try to get it on the green from here, now the rain six, really right starts to fall six, harder, yeah. which we're all expecting. I'm not going to throw anybody the off expectations-wise. Yeah, yeah. Just minimize your losses when you're out of position. That's what he's trying to do right now. With grass, you've got to be careful that the club doesn't turn over. Well done. Safely back on the fairway for Tommy Fleetwood. Cup go on. The ninth with the driver. Four. Four. It really is turning into a very tough day now at Royal Port Rush. If yesterday was the best conditions we've had all week, this might be just about the worst conditions we've had. It wasn't all that pleasant on Friday, but it really is now a tough day for players and for spectators. <laughs> They're having a great day out at the open, aren't they? <laughs> well, look at that, the <laughs> rain is pouring down now. And it's windy, and it's cold. Other than that, where would you rather be? I would rather be at, at nowhere else except at Royal Port Rest today. Wouldn't you, Thomas? Well, he's quite nice in this commentary booth right now. <laughs> I'm feeling, oh, Jay Townsend just came in the picture. I'm feeling for you, Jay Townsend out there. I'm feeling for you because you're not out here in the atmosphere. Forget about the rain. I dressed for it. Let me tell you, this is amazing out here. What an atmosphere. Natural amphitheater around this green on three sides. And it is just electric. I mean, the rain is just chucking down. Huge drops coming down sideways. But these people wouldn't want to be anywhere else. No one's walking away. There's tented villages and stuff to go to. You don't want to be there. You know what? This takes me back to the Irish Open of 2009, when the weather was not unlike this. You mean uh, when you were in the box and I was walking around <laughs> with Shane that day? That's the day at it's, Bowtree, County Louth Golf Club. And that was the day that Shane Lowry won the Irish Open as an amateur. It might be wet, it might be cold, but they are just having the most wonderful time. They're watching themselves on the big screens in the village. 70 yards here for Fleetwood off of a tight lie. I think that lie hurt him right there. Yeah, that uh, wasn't what he would have been hoping for. We were expecting to hit that a lot closer, but these conditions are really, really tough. You have to you have to be so patient to play golf in weather like this. from Danny. This is br brutal now. Look at them laughing. <laughs> <laughs> at least for the European players, it's not entirely unfamiliar. I mean, if you play your golf in Asia or even in the States or South Africa, when there's bad weather like this, it usually brings thunderstorm activity, so you're off the course. You don't play on. The 
this is where you take a lot of extra time to put that waterproof jacket on. Well, they did predict it. And the only thing you worry about in these situations is will the golf course hold up? You really don't want them to come off the golf course. You want to keep everybody out there. Westwood second shot at the pin pole. Being a set up on top of that uh, sand dune. Beautiful. That is a superb second shot by Westwood. Yeah. That's a great shot in the worst of the weather, isn't it? We're told by the optimists amongst us that this will last for about 15 minutes and then move on. The pessimists are already disappearing off into the distance. The, the, the weather experts are they the optimists or the pessimists? <laughs> it's pessimisting down at the moment, that's for sure. Justin Rose, third shot on the nine. Oh. Oh, that's a shank. That is a solid straight shank. I'm sorry I used bad language there. Not supposed to use that word shank, are you? No, the unmentionable. Wow. That was a brilliant shot to get it to this position from that awkward lie that Shane had in the right rough. The rain just starting to abate a little bit. I mean, it's still pouring, but not like it was two minutes ago. The green is just absolutely soaked here. This ball will likely have a rooster tail if it starts rolling. Not a tremendous amount of break. This is just about pace. Thomas does make a good point that it takes an awful lot for a sand-based Lynx course to take on water, but this is torrential and there isn't a golf course anywhere that won't eventually take on puddles. Yeah, Ricky Fowler, third shot to nine. Go on, go on. Beautiful putt. Throw it up there and yet to the green for Danny. Yeah, it's slowing up a lot now. Tommy would have been watching that one roll up. Unfortunately, didn't give him a good line. He was always right of the line. The thing is, might go a little left to right as it approaches the hole and loses pace. Shank and then he played to here, Justin. So this is for Bogey. And he's not having a good day, Justin Rose. He had such a wonderful Sunday round last year at the Open Championship. It's unfortunately the opposite this year. It wasn't a bad putt there, Shane Lowry, from very, very long distance. Got six or seven feet left. The dampness will take some of the break out of it. Let's just see where he aims it, but I would have thought he's aiming it maybe just a touch right. Just to save power and lead by seven. Fleetwood 11 under, the margin is 6. Shane has already broken the open record 
for 54 holes, beating Tom Lehman's record from 1996. The all-time scoring record is 20 under par. Henrik Stenson three years ago at Trun. Shane at the moment is 17 under, so I guess that's very much a possibility. Now Lee Westwood for a birdie. Here at the 10th hole, turn, turn. Beautifully high from Lee Westwood. And Lee always looks forward to the challenge. And that was a big one going up that tent with the weather. Great attitude. Ricky Fowler tapping in for par. Well done. Someone else lost a bet in the pub last night. He's taking a selfie out in the cold Atlantic on a day like this. <laughs> Dale, you're not often lost for words, but well, I think you might be at that. I'm just, I'm just wondering if there's anybody that might want to certify that fella, because <laughs> I think they should put him away. Now, uh, Danny Willett for his par. Yes, well done, Danny. <laughs> Great putts from that group there on the that hole. Bit of a shocker of a lie. Just Hello. needs to hammer this down as far as he can. He's done very well from there, Brooks. Gosh, that pin down there, it looks like a distant memory. <laughs> you kind of played golf and weather like this too often, Alison, I wouldn't have thought. I try to avoid it, but <laughs> having said that, wouldn't give it up for anything today. Just all muscle here for Tony Fino. Find it. it really is tough for everyone out there now. It brings back memories of that Saturday at Muirfield. Yeah. The weather there was... Well, that's the worst I've ever played golf in. Thomas, I was out there that day following L's, and I can tell you it's a lot warmer today. That's about the only difference. 2002, Monty shot 84, Tiger shot 81. Thomas? Uh, I think I shot 73 or 74, oh. and it's probably one of the better rounds of golf I've ever played. <laughs> Definitely. This ninth hole is about risk management off the tee. It's into a left to right breeze with the rain pelting down. Left is a no-go area. The further you go right, the hole plays longer as it bends right to left. You just take a club that will not reach that first right bunker. That's all you're trying to do. Get it in a playable lie. It doesn't have to be in the fairway. In a playable lie, the right rough is not bad, so you can play a second shot. Jay, how hot is the wind blowing? It's about a two club wind at the moment. Not the hardest it's blowing all day, but pretty formidable. Well, that's one of the areas that you know that you could miss it in, and it's fine. You have to be pretty unlucky to get a lie that you couldn't advance it a long way. I'm not sure you'll be able to reach the green straight into the teeth of the wind. It's starting to rain harder now as Tommy contemplates his tee shot. So obviously the uh, optimists, optimists were a little bit too optimistic. Well, you guys were talking about that in the last green. Everyone out here is optimistic because no one's going in. I mean, this is just... If Lowry goes on to win, this will be talked about for decades, like Tiger's first win at Augusta. Coming back to Northern Ireland and Irishman winning, what could be better? Absolutely. But there's a lot of golf left. Absolutely. Every Open Championship that ends in a nine has been very exciting. Quite incredible. 
1929 was the last one Walter Hagen 139 was the last one before the war 49 was the first one Bobby Locke 159 the first one Gary Player 169 Tony Jacklin won it after 18 years 79 was first one Sebi won 89 was uh, the first uh, playoff four hole playoff 99 was Jean Fodderfeld when Paul Laurie won in 2009 of course when uh, Stuart Sink beat uh, Tom Watson in a playoff everyone's been historic and this is going to be no different what happened to you? When you're as old as me, it's not history. <laughs> but now we just school it wasn't Welsh. even a subject. <laughs> Max Boyce used to say, he was the hair boy. Oh, this is not looking nice for Tony Fina, this one. Difficult. That was impressive, that there. It was almost a rant, but it <laughs> just came out that quick. All these books that Dale has in that wonderful library at his club, Swatcop in South Africa, he's actually read them, they're not just for sure. <laughs> The final round of the Open. My first visit to Royal Port Rush for 68 years. It's turning into a memorable Open in more ways than one. Shane Lowry by six. To Ricky Fowler on the tenth, looking at that awful tee shot on the first, and it led to a double bogey. But he's three under par since then. I think he can do a lot with this. He's shuffling it back out. It's easier said than done, but it's so important to try and keep the ball on the short grass. Keep the ball out of that long grass. And that long grass gets wet, it just wraps around the wraps around the shaft of the club, wraps around the head of the club, and just you don't get any control at all. Don't have much control over anything right now. I can confirm there's cracks in the pavement of my waterproofs. This is gonna drop down to JB's right. Been tough for JB Holmes today, 41 to the turn. Oh, but 30 feet for Tony Finau. And oh, good try. This would be some par, tell you what. A little downhill, a little right to left as well, but just hard to judge the speed here. There's so much moisture on the greens now. Hardest holes at the moment, the ninth and the eleventh. And that's the hardest of all. Get her back yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Good target now. Middle of the two bunkers. Yeah. Leaving the towards the left that one. Yeah. Shane has no lie at all, 245. He's just trying to get it over that uh, second right fairway trap. About 130 to carry, and that'll be a pretty good carry from this lie. Straight into the wind. Really smart, controlled play. Didn't try and do too much with that. Well done. And Dave and the caddies have to work even harder than usual. Yeah, well, he's 
the only one that's not allowed to blame the caddy this week. <laughs> yes. Fleawood taking off the uh, waterproof jacket as the rain has stopped for the moment. I don't think you want to fold it up and put it in the cabinet. But he's okay for the time being. 201 into a really stiff breeze. Seems like with that big rain that just came through, the wind is the strongest it's been all day. Almost straight into their face. A reasonable lie, but incredibly wet. As Dale said a little while ago, when the rough gets wet, it just changes the characteristics of how it, you know, pushes the club around and the hosel of the club that wants to grab it more. Anything on the front half of the green will be an outstanding shot. Whether it's enough, but miss. Oh, you want to oh, it out. No, no, no. Get on the front on edge. Shell of that shot. Low okay. area to the right. Yeah, come on, looking for but that's okay it's a nice look up this old set screen the Himalayas that's what the hole is called Also in trouble off the tee, so this is also his third shot. So for control the distance. Very tough conditions here at Royal Port Rush. 135 for Shane. He's got to be happy about this. Short iron in his hand after that tee shot into a left to right wind. These tough conditions, Shane Lowry. Beautiful controlled ball flight. Okay. 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 Supporting oh, Shane Lowry will, I'm sure, appreciate just what this would mean for an Irishman to win in Ireland. And thankfully, the worst of the weather seems to have passed for the moment, anyway. That's my back pocket zip open. Rusty and came up short. And you know when you can just like, all of a sudden, like, oh no. I've got a zip. Very good. Very nice from Lee there. Think about Shane you know, when he won that 2009 Irish Open. He got dubbed the People's Champion. Well, he's certainly doing his bit for the people right now. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a surprise from Ricky that. Tommy's going to chip this, could take a couple of mounds out of play, not very far in front of him. Everything's going to want to move 
just gently left to right as it starts rolling up towards the hole. You have to be careful going off a little bit of an upslope here into the wind. Chip with too much loft, this could get caught up and come up short. Straight to the par here. Yeah. Shane tells a lovely story about that Irish Open win as an amateur in 2009. Back to the second, just after she. Danny Willett taking the putter out of the, the swale. Shane had a decision to make as an amateur. Was he going to stay amateur to play in the Walker Cup of that year or turn pro immediately? And his great buddy and former amateur teammate, Rory McElroy, phoned to give him some advice. Rory was 19 at the time. Already a pro for a couple of years. They remain great friends to this day. And Rory will be as delighted as anyone to see his old, his old buddy contending as well as he is. Well, if he can make this putt, Thomas, this is massive. Good putt. It's perhaps just over borrowed a touch. The front line of level power for Shane Lowry. Bogey on eight, bogey on nine. In the tough conditions. There's still a championship to be won here. Fabulous tee shot there from a uh, chip shot from Tommy Fleetwood. So he's just got this little one now to get one shot closer to the leader. Well done. The difference is five. That's in one over par, Larry out an even par, so the four shot overnight leaders. Five as they turn into the back nine. Westwood for par. Yeah. Oh. Unfortunately, Justin Thomas lost his ball here at the 17th, so this is for a double bogey. Oh, it's a seven. Oh dear, he's going along so nicely. So look at that, Audi 33, then did drop a shot at the 12th, but got it right back at the next hole. This young man is going to get a lot more chances. He really is a very talented player. Halfway through the final round of the Open for the leaders, and Shane Lowry's lead is five shots over Tommy Fleetwood. Round of the day, the defending champion Francesco Molinari, 66. Didn't drop a shot out in the slightly better weather this morning. Finishes on three under par. Dylan Fratelli and John Ram over par today. Andrew Putnam, Matt Kutcher all three, four over par. It's been a tough final day. We knew it would be the weather forecast led to a, an earlier start than originally scheduled for Open Sunday. Been a good Open for Arnie Ells, 73 today, finishes at one over par. Justin Harding falling away at the weekend. Russell Knox having a bad day today, a couple to go. He's six over for the day. Dustin Johnson, a 76. Sergio Garcia in his 82nd straight major appearance, the longest active street streak of anyone. 82 majors in a row, dating back to the 99 US Open. And an 80 from Yuki Inamori, the back marker, along with Nino Botasio. Well, the 
say that major championship starts on the back nine on Sunday, really. Well, this is it. Nine holes to go. Tommy Fleet was up first. But what a place to start it with a five shot lead for Shane Lowry. It doesn't happen very often. Three wood off the tee for Tommy Fleetwood. Got to start hitting fairways, Jay. He certainly does. It, in the mounds on the right, there's a white stone. Over that white stone, it's about 355 to run through the fairway. It's blind hit landing area today. They're going to hit over the top of a hill. Wind straight behind. It's coming. Safe up. In the thick rough once again for Tommy Fleetwood. That's the difficulty of this tee shot. There, there's a lot of humps and hollows and really deep rough up the right. You have to start it up the right and ride the wind a little bit. Most of it's behind you. Shane going with the big stick here. Just trickling into the second cut there. <laughs> Beautiful hole this 12 hole. See everything right there in front of you. Starting down the left, cutting it back into the fairway, riding the wind. Surprise, Lee Westwood finds another fairway. Ricky mm -hmm. Fowl on the 11th. This is a tough hole today. Dog leg right. Just going over the corner when he's coming over this a little bit. He's going left. It's trouble for Ricky. Gonna move a little to the right in the beginning, should break back left at the end. Great chance here going into some tough holes on 11. He hasn't had many of those, a par for Kepka. Danny Fuller took the 12th par 5. Ah, not flying that first day there, don't go too far oh. right. Yeah. Yeah. He won't be getting on the green for two, that's for sure. Well, Tony Finau has found the green area for two, so he's putting for Eagle. Fourth and seven under. And if he holds that, he'll move into fourth on his own. JB Holmes, he con continues to struggle, but that's well hold there. He's having a tough day today. Plus five for the round. Paid a nice compliment to uh, his playing partner yesterday, Shane Lowry. He said it was a privilege to play with him. He said, wonderful to see somebody play golf that well over such a difficult golf course. It was a nice thing to say for a playing partner. Absolutely. Benson is not having the greatest of days. One over par. This is birdie. Actually, two over par. This is the birdie. Great pot. Good on the back line here, though, Henry. Two and in the last four. And all these past champions 
will always push to the end and they'll have that lovely walk up the 18s where people appreciate what they've done in this fantastic tournament. <laughs> Sixty-three for McIntyre. Not this group, I think. This is seventy. You're gonna get some fun, Tom. Doesn't scoot on. Yeah, yeah. That's an eight, aren't they? I only bet him two, yeah. I don't think that's gonna play too much. One fifty, yeah. Any pitching? It's got. One ninety-one here. Marginal lie. I don't think that Tommy can get it to the hole. Pretty narrow. We don't need to agree as well. Just a little bit over 150 to get to the front edge. I'd say that would be an amazing result. Okay. Four carry on the. Oh, you went okay. right a bit. You yeah. just hit it right, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. Forty carry on that that marshal yeah, in the yeah. blue. The wind is strength and it's probably a three club wind at the moment. Yeah. All from the wind. Right the front here. Yeah. Comes out perfect, you never know. <coughs> There's a lot of gust out there, it was seven miles an hour, 25 miles an hour. Oh, oh. oh God. Come on, King right, King right. Oh, nice. Tony Finau for birdie on 12. Nice part, well done. Eight on the part. He's only had one bogey today, Tony. And that's good going in these conditions. Lowry ball right in right deep rough, but it's not a great lie. It's kind of sitting down a little bit. 147, wind straight off right. It's the type of lie the ball's going to want to release, which is perfect for this back hole location. Easy, easy, easy. It's gone over the back, but it's not bad position. He's only 35 feet from the hole. Big trouble here. Almost could lose him in that. That's all he could do. And agreed. His second shot. to be finished at five under. This is where Ricky finished after chopping it out of the thick stuff. It's getting difficult even with the short irons now in windy conditions, gusting conditions. that one a little bit. You can 
can see the wind right behind the player, so not a difficult thing to do is to misjudge it. Oh, wind is playing that hard. Tommy has a reasonable line above the level of the green. Wind just howling off his right, which is going to help him maybe play a little bit of a hook shot with this pitch shot, take the big left right slope out of play. Should be able to get this within five or six feet. Really well executed from Tommy. Right there? Yes. Right there? Yep. Right there. Oh, he was for second shot. Wasn't the best. So this is where he is for hitting his third. That obviously wasn't in a great position. Shane was very lucky. He was standing on a sprinkler head, got to drop it over to the left, which took a big slope out of this. Now it's just pretty straightforward down through the fringe out of the first cut of rough, which is very on this new hole, seven and eight. In this area, this little bit of new green around here, the, the rough isn't as dense. So this made this shot a lot easier, took a variable out of play. So this one's pretty straightforward. A little bit of a down to live, make it release out, just get it rolling down there like a pipe. Shane handles this. Wouldn't be a bad time to chip one in. professional golfer in the world. New Westwood now at the par five. This from yard and a half off the back of the green for a birdie. Good effort. Like it's gonna break it quite a bit left to right. And it's downhill. Yeah. Beautiful pop chain. We've got to say that he's been absolutely brilliant in that distance this week. Positive, great strokes. That would give you a lot of belief. You can see the breath is getting a little deeper now, but that's only natural. Every one of those just takes them that little bit closer to the Holy Grail. Lovely four at ten. He remains at 16 under. He has to stay in the moment. He's got to just keep thinking one shot at a time. He mustn't allow himself to think forward. Think about his tee shot at the 11th hole. That's all he should be thinking about now. Being kind to Tommy Peter today. Back to six shots, the difference. With eight holes to play. Westwood for power at 12. Often Lee's Achilles heel. That's two short ones he's missed today. 
Back-to-back -back bogeys, back at eight under par. At the age of 46, still a wonderfully competitive golfer, but how many more chances to finally win a major are there going to be for Lee? Because I think this one's probably gone. Some golfer. He never gives up, but he always finds a way to finish high up in major championships. He sneaks in sometimes, but he always finds a way. Well, Patrick Reed finishing off his round. That wasn't the most of, most positive of putts. for Danny Willett. Thomas at the last for a birdie and that ugly seven at the 17th. It's going to be a part of the last. Uh, the American, a round of 72 is going to finish three under inside the top 15. major champions there playing together they'll have learned a lot about Lynx golf and they'll certainly be back both of them to challenge in the future yep heads off to the RNA for their golf course set up here this hole would have been unreachable in this type of win had they not moved the tee up 29 yards so a good tee shot into this left to right win will allow the players to get just a little bit past the dog leg where it bends from left to right when this has died down a little bit, I'm going to say it's still a two club. Go! Go! Go. Yeah, yeah. Show it there. It's a monster on tee shot. I can't imagine the adrenaline flowing through his veins to hit it that far into this wind. No, he's pumped now, Jay. He really is. Fleetwood got the driver as well. Totally different feeling here for Tommy than it is for Shane. Who has the Claret jug in sight, but as you said, you have to stay in the moment. Wind's starting to gust up a little higher now as Tommy stands over this one. say these shirts are beginning to grow on me a little bit maybe it's just familiarity or, or maybe it's because I heard they were designed by a Glasgow design company break about that there you go JB Holmes four shot on his par four and it's not the whole cold calamity but it is a bit of calamity golf there <laughs> Tony Finnell at the 13th for a par to stay at eight under in third place. Oh dear. Was well, going along really nicely too, Tony, but that's a couple of bogeys in the last three holes. Slips back to seven under. Still tied for fifth though, along with Fowler and Kepka. I would say this has got to be the surprise of the day. 
Yeah, what? I thought he would come out flying to, uh, Brooks today. But he's still in the top five. Just shows how high the level of expectation is in Brooks Kepka these days in majors. First second, first second is last four, but he's going to be up there again today. Shane Lowry, though, leads by six. A little bit further down. Alex Noron and Henrik Stenson, the two Swedes now on four under, and Francesco Molinari finishing his open defence with a 66. Bad day for Cameron Smith and Dylan Fratelli and Matt Kutcher. All four over today. From our champion Stuart Sink, Matthew Fitzpatrick, a 73, Eric Van Rooyen, who's had a couple of good weeks, Scotland last week, and here at the Open. And 49 year old Arnie Elves finishes at one over par, the two time Open champion. the hills and they turn from right to left looking good as he hit it, as he hit it. that's his fifth drop shot of the day five drop shots in an eagle the rest bars Team for Willett. That's closer, closer to the 17th screen than the 13th. That one. That's interesting, uh, Thomas, because Rom and Finna did exactly the same thing there. JB Holmes just having a horrible day. That's going to be a triple bogey seven. 11 for the American. And that drops him to 8 over par for the round. Yeah, it's terrible when you have those days, especially on the final day of a major. But it happens to pretty much everyone in their careers. And you, all you can think about is just get it over with and get out of there. Fabulous drive by Shane Lowry, though. Oh, he's done it. Look. 168. Great lie in the second cut of rough over here. Good angle. It's a very friendly hole location into a left or right breeze. It's just one you're going to want to trap, kind of close down on top of, not shoot it up in the air. Ideally, land it about 10, 12 yards short of the hole. Just get it to release. To get the club face directly on the ball, you don't want to get a fly. Golf shot, sweet grass. That's a good shot. Dale, if he'd have flown that a yard and a half further, would have landed on the flat and gotten twice as close to the hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, go ahead. As you said, great drive from Lowry right in the middle of the fairway. A little bit of a down slope he's on, going to help him drive this into the wind. 155. This angle, a little bit more left to right wind, but still hurting. Shot for shot, hole for hole, get this one over, make a par, make a birdie, go to the next hole, try and do the same thing. Not the best from Danny there. Going back to Shane, you know, it, there's a couple of holes that he wanted to get out of the way, and 11 was certainly one of them.
shot into the par 5 12 for Ricky. Back in 2014, he was in the top five of all four majors. Was the first man ever to do that without winning one of them. Oh, Westwood's gone long here as well on 13. And it comes up over the hill. those crowds the support for this open championship has been phenomenal tickets sold out months and months ago and brilliant long par putt for Danny Willard at 13 Drop him back into a tie for fourth at seven under. Shane put it in a nice position here. Very little break, pretty much right up the fall line. No win to deal with on this green because there's a big mound in. Tremendous wall of spectator blocking the wind down at green level. Looking at the green book, it says a little bit of left to right, but I don't think you want to play a whole lot. This is just about hitting it hard enough to get it up the hill. Oh, he did that. Wow, that went off in his hands. Just missed a very, very short one on 12 late. So he'll be thinking about this. Oh. This game, it just kicks you in, you down, doesn't it? Fleetwood, to go up the same hill, but a little bit more left to right here. Tommy obviously in game, I just try and make a couple of birdies here, put a little bit of pressure on Shane. If he maybe drops a couple, who knows? But he can't rely on Shane making a couple of mistakes. He's got to try and find a couple of birdies from somewhere. Six behind. He might do good. I don't think he's going to make that many mistakes. You know, he might make one or two, but got to find, got to find something special on all these closing holes from Tommy Fleetwood. Thomas, this is a little bit downhill right to left, but I think the importance of this putt is if he makes it, it eliminates a cloud of doubt coming in. Only the sound of the wind across the links at Wellport Rush. First time he's looked far below that distance of five. That's three bogeys in the last four holes for Shane Lowry. Up to 15 under, still has a five shot lead. Ain't over yet. On a golf course like this, it's never over because there's always the opportunity of a little disaster, isn't there? We've seen it, we've seen so many this week. We've seen. Rory McIlroy's first hole. We've just seen Justin Thomas make a seven. It is possible to do, unfortunately. So 
John disappointing day for Justin Rose. We saw they're playing with Fowlery six over today, Justin. This is Westwood at 14. happened for Justin today hasn't made a birdie this would be the first at 12. He's back in 13th place but at least that's something that you can see by the look on his face it's just a huge disappointment he was always one of the favorites this week it just hasn't happened for the Englishman Shane Lowry's leaders five shots going to the 12th tee Tony Fina, Lee Westwood, Danny Willett and Ricky Fowler are tied for third on seven under. Brooks Kepka can do no better today than three over par. There's Rose who now joins Noron and Stenson and a tie for tenth. Tom Lewis has finished well with a 70. Anything under par today is pretty exceptional. People were looking for Jordan Spieth and John Ram to make a move today. And they haven't been able to do so. JB Holmes having just an awful day. Eight over. Leo Sazen finishes with a 69. There won't be many scores in the 60s on this final day at Royal Port Rush. Now up to 12 and kept up. Second into the par five. in the thick stuff over the back for Kepka. JB Holmes is also in the thick stuff. Chapel's over on the right of the green looking for it. Fleetwood has driver in hand, wind just howling off the left. It's picked up, probably didn't drop off. It just on the 11th, we were a bit protected, couldn't feel it as much. It's definitely a three club wind up here. That left to right wind just feeds the balls towards the second and third Right bunkers. Lowry made a bogey at the previous hole, but he hit a good drive, so that bodes well here. Tommy just showed him a good one to look at in front of him. He drove it a great hit yesterday. as if it was going to be that good. Just got to get his focus back, Shane. It's, you know, it's not that easy. People think it's easy when you've got a six-shot lead, but it's very easy for your mind to slip into neutral. You know, you drop a couple of shots and then get to get back in gear again. Take a bit of bit of willpower. For now, at fifteen. on the PGA Tour. Succession of high finishes, but he's desperate to get another couple of trophies. It's not going to be here, I don't think. Thirteen. 
tee shot at 13, sorry, foul there. His opening shot out of bounds today. Fantastic after that. That was a hard kick, wasn't it? Settle. Oh no, it's gone down the dunny. Down Not too the bad. Dunny. <laughs> Westwood. Lovely t shirt at 14. Also, been on a run of three bogeys. Missing so many short cuts. Maybe that's a better range for him. Maybe he can turn things around there. It was a pure second. Simple version, hit and hope. Well, he hit it really well and he hoped extremely well. That was, that was really well done. Now, four majors in the last two years. Astonishing record, and he's high on that leaderboard again. He's not going to make it five, but another terrific major performance by Kepka as we go back to 14 in Willett. Shot. Yeah, expecting the wind to push it a bit more down that hill. Mm. Lot of, lots of head scratching this afternoon. Now, Fina, three wood to here, third position. World ranking points, can't win, Let's try and finish as high up as it can. That's a lovely shot, Fina. Good distance. Just about everyone dropping shots this part of the course 11 such a hard hole 12 a par 5 but it's certainly no gimme birdie 13's a hard hole 14's a hard hole hey in the final round of the open in the back nine they're all hard holes have you seen how tough 17 it's playing they were driving it yesterday Slow down. Whew. Finally made a birdie on 12. Yeah. 150 to the trap up there on the left. He just want to knock it back out into play. His nearest competitor is Tommy Fleetwood, and he can reach this green in two. But again, into the wind leaves it quite a bit short. Yeah, he wasn't going to make the same mistake as Rose. At least his second putt will be back into the wind. JB's troubles continue to take an unplayable here. So this is his fourth shot. He's hit the bank and that's going to roll all the way back down again. The man has shared the lead with Shane Lowry after 36 holes, but there's not a lot gone right since. Although apparently his words to Shane walking off the 18th tee yesterday afternoon were really very impressive. He said, I've had a bad day, but it's been a privilege watching you. Go on you, JB. A gentleman.
weak effort. But no pace, not really ever online. It's been one of those days with a putter for, for Justin. He's won at least once every year since 2010, Justin Rose. That's a hugely impressive record, including his, his only major, US Open in 2013. Just to say, par for Fowler at 13. on a day like today. Holmes has had some issues. That's for a bogey. Ten over today. That is a triple followed by a double and I would say the brain has now become scrambled eggs. Seven his last two. Now Kepka. Got a chance to win. Nine shots behind. I don't think that's gonna happen, but he's in fifth place, just a shot outside third. Incredible shot from the thick rough over the green to here. Great control. Inside left, maybe just outside, depending on how hard he hits it. The wind's strong off the left. Oh, dear. That was such a good putt, too. Horrible feeling, wasn't it, Simon? You started having to adjust the line on the crosswind. It's not a verse. You know, if you made them, you felt you were lucky and not good. It's been a long wait for Fleetwood. Win almost straight off the left, hurting a little bit. 218 to get to the top of the false front, 239 to the hole. Even with his draw, he's going to have to aim it right in the middle of the grandstands to the left and just let it slide in on the win. You do not and cannot miss it right. Once again, Shane was out of position off the tee, played a smart shot, yeah. took all the trouble out of play. Yeah. All right. 110 to the hole with just one of his wedges here, probably the gap wedge, take a little bit of air out of it. With this wind out of the left, you just want to play a little bit of a squeeze cut, aim it right at Tommy's ball, let it float left to right. Fifteenth tee, Lee Westwood. Chance for Eagle on 12. 
Sam, can you think of anything more irritating than wearing a hoodie like that, which is acting like a sail flapping around your ears and your face? Cool, I'd get the scissors or the pen knife out. Danny Willett playing with Westwood. Both of them one over for the day. Straight in the bunker. I'm trying to think of what I'm talking about. I can't. No, it would be really annoying, especially on a windy day like this. Flap, flap, flap. Capcut 13, feather bed. It's called. And Ricky Fowler tied fifth. Turning it over right to left. Sorry, Ricky. Oh, was it in the bush or behind it? That does not look good for Ricky. <laughs> a little extra help to get up and get a good view of the 12th green. Shane's ball spun back far enough. Coming down that false front was a worry for a moment. Has to go up a step in the first third of this. If, if there was no wind, it would be left to right, but it's going to have a big left to right swing. The wind is just whipping straight across the screen from his left. Actually, it's going to hit him in the back when he's addressing this enough where he's going to want to push him out over the ball. It's always difficult to make solid contact when the wind is pushing you out over the ball. Solid contact is so important on these long putts. It's an absolute belter of a putt. And that will be another hole, tip two for the par. Everyone is important from here to the 18th. And that two putt was no formality. Important part for Shane Lowry after a run of three bogeys in the previous four holes. <laughs> and that's relief, isn't it? Tough putt here for Tommy, but let's not forget this is for Eagle to pick up two. Tommy has to putt up and over a big little mound that comes in from the back of the green. It's going to force this ball left to right. It has to climb it peak and then go down towards the hole and this is wind aided as well so the second half of this putt's going to be pretty quick if it goes in the lead is only three it's short but it's a birdie Shane Lowry four clear six to play for birdie on 13 excellent tee shot come on Hard, Brooksy it's a bit high look where it finishes as well he hasn't held a putt all week it's almost like he struggled Sam with the slower pace of the greens I think you know we know US opens and fast greens he's brilliant yep birdie four for Tommy Fleetwood his first birdie since the fifth hole but it just puts a little more pressure on Shane Lowry. The margin is now four. Six holes to go. There's still a lot can happen. 1,600 golfers entered the 2019 Open. 156 made it to Royal Port Rush, including six amateurs. And the profits made by the RNA from the Open spread around the world to benefit the game of golf and around 80 countries will benefit from an increase in their funding courtesy of the RNA and the, the money raised and that will amount to around 200 million pounds over the next decade so that's the value of this championship and the Royal and Ancient Golf Club of St Andrews to the game of golf worldwide perfect tee shot from Westwood 
22's missed a number of short putts today. Settle. It's okay. Straight down win. Yeah, there's no question. If Lee had been a better than average putter, or even average from six feet and in, there's no question he would have had a couple of majors under his belt. No question whatsoever. Elevated to you. Easiest hole location on the green with the wind helping from the right. 198 to the hole, 185, perfect pitch point. The green slopes away from the players. This one's going to release. If you hit it past the hole, putting back uphill into the wind is probably the best putt to have for birdie. Only a short iron, it's a very elevated tee. Probably knocks 10, 12 effective yards off the actual distance. Colts up there looking down. You can have him watching these boys backing it out on his masterpiece, which Royal Port Rush is. It is, well, I think it's as good a innings course as, absolutely as good as you could ever find. That's Shane's dad, by the way, Brendan Lowry. 30 successful Gaelic footballer in his own right. Not just biting his nails, but I think his thumbs are disappearing. <laughs> Ah, uh, sit, sit. Uh, sit. Pressure filled. Yeah, take a little bit of pressure off Shane on just on this tee shot, but that's okay for now. He needs to come back down to the flat. That's quite a down slope there. When he's changing to flat to green. One Trump. Fantastic all week, a wonderful rapport between the two. Getting nearer and nearer. Six holes to go. next <laughs> played on County Offaly's All-Ireland Championship winning team in 1982 Gaelic football Shane played as a youngster he was awfully good <laughs> oh Sam <laughs> comes from Clara in County Offaly in Ireland <laughs> Shane was just get it on the surface somehow. And there are two big banks up either side of the green, left and right. The hole is called feather bed, and the only reason we can work out is that you know if you were on a big feather bed, it would sink in the middle, which is what the screen is like. I presume that's why it's called feather. No, it was called that way because of the drop in altitude from the tee to the green, and the ball will come down. Soft as it was landing on a feather bed. Now, where did you find it? Because I spoke that with Andy Drew, the RNA man that was in there this morning. He gave me that the other day. Ah, good man. It's not going to make for an easy bunker shot for Shane, though, is it? I, don't, I think he's on the upslope. Yeah, it is. And the wind's right to left. You cut it into the wind. I think he'll be okay. Look at the flag blowing.
Oh, I thought the shot for Ricky Fowler. I saw him drive it next to that bush. He left it in the rough for a second. Here for three and a super little pitch. Maybe get maybe gets out of it with a bogey. Tommy Fleetwood is probably away. He's on a little bit of a downslope here, a very tight lie, mm -hmm. well below the level of the green, but pitching into the wind, that's going to really help his shot. He's going to go up and have a look at the pitch point here because there's a false edge up here. He's going to want to fly it over. This downhill lie is going to pinch it. He flies it into the bank before it flattens out. It's going to absolutely kill the momentum. Wind really starting to gust right now, but this is definitely one off this downhill tight lie. You're going to have to pinch, spin, drive. It sounded like he was considering the putter, Jay. I think it, it's one that, you know, is in the playbook here, Doogie. Because the nature of this lie being a little bit downhill and such a tight lie, you're going to have to de-loft to pinch it. Wouldn't want to mess with the bounce on this wedge. Certainly you're bringing a little danger into play if you pitch it and add a little loft. Shane Lowry has the perfect lie. The heavy range just smoothed out all the rake marks. This ball is just sitting right on top. Perfect lie, little upslope. Landing on the downslope, just a little extra sand and let it release out down the slope. Pretty easy shot. Circumstances has pulled it off and his dad is overjoyed. Beautiful. It's always harder too when you've had rain, the sand is wetter, gets heavier, but it can also cause the court the, the sole of the club to bounce more when it's wet and compacted. And he's just he's done it just beautifully. Tony Johnson. Great release. Head stays down until well after impact. Gorgeous. Wherever you're watching around the world, I'm sure you're absolutely captivated by this. 148th open at Royal Port Rush. The lead, remember, four shots. That Irishman looking to win in Ireland. Thomas Bjorn's back with us. Not over yet, Tom, is it? No, it certainly isn't. But you feel that this one is an important one. Well, they're all important now, I guess, but. He's got a few back there, Tommy and Shane. Yeah. Very, very, down, very good up and down there from Tommy Fleetwood. And it puts the pressure back on Shane. The last four holes are playing extremely tough. We're just looking at our scoreboards in here. There's just nothing but bogeys and doubles and triples. Which is good for Lowry because it's hard for Fleetwood to burn you them. But it only takes one sensational shot and then you've got two or three shot swing. He's been so
so positive on these all week, Shane. Maybe not quite as positive as the others, but it's in the bottom of the hole, and that's where he wanted it. The leader's still four shots. Now just five holes to go. And surely now it's between these two men. Shane Lowry of Ireland, Tommy Fleetwood of England. And the Irish flag flew twice at the open for Podrick Harrington. Is it going to fly now for Shane Lowry? Taking my head down now, just try and stay calm and concentrated. Nothing beats this feeling being out there on Sunday afternoon of a major championship to win. Danny Willett, three bogeys in a row, I'm afraid. He's beginning to slide back down the leaderboard. Lowry at 15 under, Fleetwood at 11 under. And it's another four shots back to Finnow and Westwood. Yeah, you've got to give plenty of room. Especially on the angle. Yeah. Yeah. You see the people in the bread? Yeah. Like the left of the tower? Yeah. That is the left of the bunker. Yeah. Probably not in that, into that way. No, no, we'll move up there. Yeah, yeah. Come on, precise. Wind just whipping across from the right here, a fairway that just slopes all right to left. Unless you were going to cut it up against the wind, hard to hold the fairway. No way you can cut it up against this wind. It's too strong. Just aim it in the right rough and just let it eat. Go on, Tommy, lads. That he didn't need. During the last four holes, there's only been 18 birdies between the whole field today. Birdies are scarce. This man probably doesn't need all pars. He can still win. Just eliminate any big numbers. All right. From the tee, they wouldn't have seen where Tommy's ball ended up. It's over a little mound. Going with the three wood, taking the two bunkers, one in the fairway and the one left of the fairway out of play with this club. Keep pushing to Beautiful shot this week, Shane. <laughs> but all that hard work and tough conditions, it it gets to you as the round goes on and everything becomes a little bit more unsettled. Brooks cap cap. He's actually recovered really well after that horrendous start when he bogeyed the first four holes. Any slim chance he had of winning the Open went at that point. Uh, Westwood. Calamity corner. Very aptly named. That's a wee bit short for Lee. That's a weak one. Him and Finno are tied in third at the moment. Well, 
Well, lads, if you think it's been tough out there, this back nine, so far in the last 12 groups of 128 holes played, 59 bogeys, two triples, two doubles, and only 11 birdies. It's just brutal out there. And if, when you look at it, Cyril Hatton is the last guy to be on the par on the golf course, and he teed off two hours before the leaders. And he makes the fewest mistakes. This point on. I think there are two. That's why. I think that's why. And it's been. I think those of us in in Europe have always been aware of the special Royal Court rushes. After all, it's stayed six senior opens, three amateur championships, four Irish opens. But I think for the rest of the world to see Royal Court rush probably for the first time, I'm sure has been eye opening. <laughs> staging of the tournament as well, Dookie. The whole, whole thing's been run by the RNA. I mean, I would just come straight out and say this is this is the best run major, simple as that. It's been brilliant. Well, it's been a great call to take the Open Championship back here. It really has, you know, from, from looking at the Northern Irish lads that have been playing this week, but the fans, and it's just been, it's been great here. It's been, it's been fun, and it's been Entertaining Westwood for par. That's another bogey for Lee Westwood. He's not the only one. It really is so tough this back nine. Shane's dad walked by a few moments ago and he said, You're feeling nervous? And he could barely squeak out, very nervous, and kept on walking. Shane got lucky here, 189. He's drawn a great lie. He's on the proper, missed the proper side of the fairway here, so he's not coming in downwind out of this lie, hitting back more into the wind in this right to left wind. You just can't miss it to the left here. He has 183 to the top of the false front. I don't think he'll likely fly it up there. Might try and play a low runner. If he flies it up there, it's going to go 30, 40 feet past the hole. And wind hard off the right. to make maybe one, two, three bogeys coming in here. It's quite amazing how his left little finger comes off the grip altogether off his left hand. Thomas, I agree with you. He doesn't even right have to make pars because no one else is making birdies to, to catch him. He just have to eliminate disaster. And Lowry missed it in the right place. Fleetwood does not have a good lie. Will struggle to reach the green. Is he at the point, Thomas, where he has to take a chance? You can't see the TV tower. Can you see the TV tower? No, no. I don't think so. On the right side, you can get 80 out of it. You're going to hit the downslope and go short the green? Yeah, yeah. If you don't, it doesn't matter. Leaving it in this bunker, this championship is over. You know, that's my... Only 134 to the hole. 128 to reach the top of the slope. Wind 
directly behind. Right. Putting himself in a position where he virtually can't make power and I think it's extremely lucky. As Thomas said, you didn't need to be greedy. Up ahead on 17, which is really playing tough today. A birdie putt for Tony Finnau. Look where he's aiming. <laughs> so far right to left. since the fourth which was the third of his three in a row so Westwood Fowler and Kepka all on six under here is Westwood well if you're wondering if it's windy up there yeah. the, the cap is off that and that means it's very windy from Lee Westwood Strong wind straight Thank left to right on 17. T, a very difficult drive to get it on the fairway. Yeah. Can he on the green? He's got a chance for it. He's got a chance for it. Shane Lowry's over the back. Shane, have you seen his lie? Tommy does not have a very good lie. He's right on top of this mound. It's not an unlevel lie for where it came to rest, but there's there's this thick, bushy thing, not very tall, but right behind his ball. He's going to have to go through to make contact, and that's going to really impede his ability to judge the distance. Coming in downwind, if he catches it more flush than he wants. That bunker's in play. Yeah, I know. Anyway, even on that back shelf, be great shot. Yeah. All thirty foot, right? Yeah. Four minutes. Yeah, he's aiming. Ball above his feet, expecting it to shut the club face down. Shane Lowry, but a guaranteed bogey for Tommy Fleetwood. Be a tough, tough bogey. Really got up and down for bogey. Not a difficult chip here. Just got to carry it over that front bit. It'll release down towards the hole. difficult for Shane this now oh, what type of golf do you play uh, I think that was the right decision just get it on the green don't open the door for Tommy Fleetwood Tommy Finnow even par for the day and there's not many can claim that Very good, that. What a goal shot from Ricky Fowler. Stunning way to play this extremely difficult par three. It's not called calamity for nothing. Well, 
There are six two balls still on the course. Not one of them is under par, and only team Tony Fino is level. That's how tough it's been today. Tommy has to putt up out of the hollow that fed his wall down here, well below the level of the green. Wind whipping off the left. Once it reaches the top, it's going to be affected by the wind. Making sure that's inside Shane Lowry. That's a poor one from Fleetwood. Yeah, that certainly doesn't put any pressure at all on his playing partner. When buffeting Fino on the 18th tee, going with the iron. Quality shot there from Tony Fino. Big right to left slope here, but the wind is pushing it up the hill. I think you have to certainly take into account the wind and play probably half the break on this one. to go five ahead at least. Is he hitting? Is he hitting? It's a bogey. He's not going to lose any shots on his nearest contender. Tommy's putt is a little bit more down the hill, but still affected by the wind. Have to take it into account, and that's a feel thing. How much less break do you play? Tall figure of Ian Finnis. Tommy Fleetwood's caddy, boyhood friend. Need to give an indication of how tough it's been. There's 216 bogeys in the whole field yesterday. If this one goes in, it would be number 300 for this day. Cool. Imagine if we had this weather for the four days. It would have been a lot of fun in here. Important putt for Fleetwood. Oh. <laughs> the lead is five. Four holes to play. Shane Lowry. Five shots clear. The dream is coming closer. Everyone dropping shots on the way in. But Shane Lowry. Leads by five with four to play. And as always, it's Caddy, Paul, Bo Martin talking to him, keeping him calm. Don't get too caught up in the atmosphere and what it all means. Kepka for Birdie at 15. Oh, good putt. First birdie of the round for Kepka. He's had an eagle, but an eagle too, but it's the first birdie. <laughs> Fowler with a birdie putt at 16. Oh no, that would have got him to seven under. Would have joined Pinnow and Kepka. Two shots behind Tommy Fleetwood. Tommy's got to be aware of that now. You know, the likelihood of him catching Lowry, unless Lowry implodes, is very slight. But he definitely wants to grab second place because it's worth loads of cash, loads of world ranking points. He's got to think about it. Shane Lowry, 14 under par. Tommy Fleetwood, 9 under par. They have only four to play. It's the final round of the 148th Open at Royal Port Rush. Yeah. 
It has been a day to remember, but then again, okay. Open Sunday always is. Drive back on her in hand, straight down, win widest fairway on the golf course, take it over the corner. Wow. <laughs> and lose there from Shane. Beautiful strike. <laughs> He's starting to believe it now. He can't play defense. Tommy's going to have to just keep playing the right shots. He's got the right club in hand. Nothing's to be gained by pushing it further up than what Shane did. The fairway drops off. Play from point A to point B. fifth for both of them and we knew that this week was going to be like that keep it in the fairways well, I think we can safely say that America's domination of the majors is coming to an end here they won nine of the last ten majors the US To 18 and Fino. Perfect tee shot. He's leaning left, means it's right. Not that far right, that's actually fine. Not a problem for Tony Fino. Stand. Oh. Four left. Four. Coming back. Bobby Locks Locker. Well, his driving lines are getting a good workout, aren't they? Fantastically useful club around links courses. Not a seat to be had in that great arena around the 18th the green. A fair way all the way up to 18, lined with people. Theopen.com. The website you want. All the information on this 148th open at Royal Port Rush. John Ram, another who's struggled in these conditions. He's five over for the day, back to two under, just inside the top 15. But playing partner Tony Fino. He's had a very good open. Tall man from Utah. Haven't seen too many birdies on the 18 today, just seven. Seen a lot more bogeys than birdies. <laughs> Fifth in the Masters earlier this year. Looks like he's heading for a top three. Here in the open. Pretty much.
much equidistant. Lowry has one twelve. Obviously, Bo likes it. He said, yep, go 112. Perfect lie. Just a little bit of an upslope here. Just easier to catch clean. Doesn't want to fly it more than 100 yards. It'll take one big bounce. Magnificent, Jay Lowry. Absolutely magnificent. You're right. Thomas, they're enjoying it now. <laughs> These two are having fun. Can you believe it? Tommy's one yard closer, different lie altogether. Ball slightly above his feet on a slight downslope, so it's going to come out a little bit lower. Forward for Brooks Kupka, just landed just on the green, let it trickle down to the hole. Nice shot. Ram, dirty chance at the last after a tough day in the office. Oh, hallelujah. So that's one in 75, three under total, and gets him into a tie of 11 at the moment. It's a nice little jump. Yeah, but no matter what you shoot in this last round, you'll be able to be disappointed, but one of the things is you learn so much about yourself, you learn so much about tough conditions, and it'll prepare you for future opens, and especially when you're John Rahm's age, there's plenty of those to come. 24 years old and already an honorary Irishman. After those two Irish Open wins, he just loves coming to Ireland, and who knows what may yet be in the future for John. Plenty of wins, that's for sure. And there's how it looks, Lowry with a five-shot lead. Good body chance coming up. Thirty-two year old Shane Lowry from Clara in County Offaly in Ireland. And unbelievably, he'd missed the last four cuts in the open before this week. Fleetwood has a little right to left or coming over a little mound right after impact wind helping so this will be pretty quick well, that's not Tommy's best that's uh, another relief for Shane Lowry as we go to Westwood on 18 another great open championship for Lee Westwood currently lying fifth It's okay. Been a great ambassador for golf West with his whole life. What a player. One all around the world. He never gets hands on a claret jug yet, but he may do next year. Royal St George's, you better book now. Tickets are available for the 149th open. A little left to right here, very makeable. Yeah. What a time to throw in another birdie. Brilliant from Shane Lowry. He moves to 15 under. Three to go. Now they know. <laughs> 
the gallery feel that it's their man's. Thank you. Can you imagine the chaos going down 18? It's going to be an absolute wonder to behold. Well, it could be chaos around here for a few days to come. It's going to be fun tonight, that's for sure. Well, yesterday he scored the second lowest run in major history. Today, in the last 10 groups, Shane Lowry has the best score of the day. Plus one. He knows exactly what that means, of course. Even with three to go, one of them's called Calamity, remember. And then Purgatory. <laughs> and then Delirium. I think we can all breathe a sigh of relief. This was a huge day for Irish golf for Shane Lowry. I'm not saying it's over. There is three holes to go, but... I think Shane's going to really enjoy these last three holes. Yeah, I, was, I was there at County Louth Golf Club, Baltry, in 2009 when this young, relatively unknown Irishman came out of the rain, shot a 62, and won the Irish Open as an amateur. Yep. I think we could have guessed then. Yep. Won a World Golf Championship. Yep. Would be on the verge thinking, winning the Open three. here in yeah. Ireland. You just got to hit. Okay. Okay. Well, listen, we talked about this in the park, didn't we? Where are we going to hit it? Yes. Look at the look at look at that one. Yeah. Well, you think you can hit stuff? I think. Yeah. You just gonna. I, I like them. I, I like them. It is bad. It is bad. Like if you think about it, right? It's three up. It's two forty. It's ten behind it. Two twenty-five. Yeah. They've not got much wrong these two. They've been some team, haven't they? And you got the slopes as well. You know. Yeah. See. Um, that's only in the blue. That's perfect. Yeah. 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 And you have your shot? Your shot? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Dugan yeah, right. has been a great team effort. Bo has worked hard. He has been spot on every time. They've picked a spot at the left edge of the grandstand behind the green. 209 into a left to right wind here. Just keep it anywhere left of the hole. Yeah. 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 Absolutely stunning. Sharks fine. <laughs> right isn't. That's the one they avoided. Tommy has to just think, I gotta just hit good shots. You never know what's gonna happen. All these holes are into the wind. And just finish it out. But you can't do anything silly. You can't overplay anything. That's when you make big numbers. Tommy knows that. He's smart. Come on. The touch left. Will it get Catch a kick? Well, that's okay, though. Oh. That's one shot ahead of Westwood. This is his chance for Birdie on the last, Lee Westwood, just to get... Tommy. Oh, goodness me, it's almost when he's left it all. Great try, Lee, another great week. Might be a 73, minus six. Kept is on seven from seventeen.
He's done just about everything in a fabulous career. 40 career wins, 10 Ryder Cups, except win a major. Sometimes there's just no justice. That's sport. <sighs> Ricky slides the par putt by. And take him to five on the total. Sixth place. Every shot now is gold. Danny will it final putt. He holds the par. Well done, Danny. He finishes minus five. That's in sixth position. Three today, same as Westwood. He'll be a couple of weeks away from his 47th birthday by the time the next major comes around, the 2020 Masters. I'm pleased to say that Lee Westwood won't challenge again for that much deserved first major. It's all about staying concentrated and focused now. Try and enjoy the moment for Shane. Such a great history in the game of golf and this island. And all the Irish and Northern Irish yeah. major champions were sitting at home now, cheering him on, wanting him to win. No more than. No, no one more than Porter Black Carrington, list. I'm sure. As far as up and down goes, pretty level putt here for Tommy. He's going to break about three feet left to right on slow band wind. Coming off the fringe, but it's almost like a green here, so expect it to roll just pure. Hey, guys. Any Black chance? Please, thank you. This is actually probably the only scenario possible where the entire crowd wouldn't be pulling for Fleetwood here. for Tommy today. He wanted to put the pressure on Shane right from the start, but the putter was cold. Fifty-seven feet right from the front edge of the green. The first third is uphill. It's going to break about two to three feet left to right on slope and wind. I wonder how many Irish kids will have shamrocks on their golf balls tomorrow. Will have hangovers. I know Shane's dad will. Not bad. Little bit of a tester here. Third shot of Capcat 17. Oh. That was a bunker cam set in the face of the bunker. Nearly had a heart attack. Well played. day to day but I think most of us believe that Tommy Fleetwood will win his major 
You can never say that. Look at Lee West and look at Ricky Fowler. But you just get a feeling that Tommy, who's been close before, will eventually win one of the big four. <laughs> so much exuberance from the crowds. If I was Bo right now, I'd take out the driver and the three wood and I'd throw them down that bank into the woods, <laughs> into the deep grass. We'll collect it later. You're not using those. <laughs> Kepka for par. Third position at the moment. Tied with Finno. Oh, he's missed another one left. What's the walk up 18 going to be like? Oh. We'll need boxes of tissues, I mean, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Fowler at 18. Second into the closing goal. Another good major for Ricky. But another in which he'll leave empty handed. to play on the final day of the Open. It is the Finishing stuff of dreams. The yellow ball. Perfect. Huh? Perfect. And there, look. Yeah. Huh? There. Yeah. yeah. Alright? Yeah. Into the wind, left to right. Not an easy tee shot here. Going with the driver again, playing aggressively. He's going to want to take a little air out of it, run it out there. Oh, He's just smothered out there. A low driller. Man, beautiful shot. What confidence now. Tommy's got the driver as well. The wind starting to gust a little bit more after Shane hit. A tough drive from an elevated position. Hold on. Well, the grass should be flattened over there. He wants that second place badly. Second in the open's no disgrace, is it? <laughs> Especially the way this man's played. Oh, my goodness. And the marshals and the stewards and security will all have their hands full from this point on, that's for sure. This country is getting ready for one heck of a party. Kepka, 18th tee, driving iron. That's a beauty. Oh, 
screen. Ricky Fowler finishing off his Open Championship. It really has been another great performance by Ricky. And like Tommy Fleetwood, I'm sure he'll have his moment in the sun. Great player. Extremely popular as well. Four today is not bad at all. Not one of the last 24 players in the course is under par, under par and only Tony Fino has matched it. But they haven't started the engraving yet. Don't tempt fate too much. By the time the Clary Jug is presented, the winner's name will be added to. Some of the Remember games all the time the great. Yeah, pitch one forty four. Mac, that was, wasn't it? Yeah. Do you think a little chippy one? It's a chippy one, Shane, yeah. Just in at the black pole. Oh, the pole. Black and white pole, yeah. 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 Got it. All right? Yeah. Good man. Plenty of green behind that. That's correct. Man, you got it. And it's a bit of a slope, too. I'm trying to just aim from the left. Yep. Standing on a top of a hill like this into the wind, it's like hitting into a wall. So he's trying to go low. Shipping it in there. That's short, okay. Yeah. He's doing everything like Shane Lowry. Well done. Good for size. Yeah, yeah. He's on the green at 17. I think it's pretty safe to start the S and the H and the N and the E. And maybe the A in the middle. Tough day for Justin Rose. That was 79, former US Open champion. He'll be back. What a performance this has been by Shane Lowry. I mean, the expectation, the pressure. And he's gone out there and done it. He's got some steel in his veins, I'll tell you what. So hard to deal with all of that. You 
has to win an Open anywhere is emotional, but to do it here in Ireland, and remember that golf is an all-Ireland sport. We're in Northern Ireland, but golf, like rugby, like cricket, is an all-Ireland sport. He and Rory McIlroy played together in the Irish amateur team all those years ago. And Rory will be as delighted as anyone for his great friend. When do you think he'll get home? About a week in Tuesday, I would think. <laughs> this year? <laughs> oh, poor dad. <laughs> Come on, Brendan, give us a smile. He's known the thrill of winning the All-Ireland. And, of course, the great tradition in what is still an amateur sport, despite its huge popularity, is that you play for your home county. Offer. That's where the Claret Jug will be going in the next couple of days. That's his power to smile. I think he's got to feel to breathe. Watching your son do this. Incredible. He's everybody's son in Ireland today. He really is. They're all behind him. And it's one thing they do well in Ireland. They get behind all their sporting heroes with everything they have. Negotiated. <laughs> okay, it's only right, too, that we should pay tribute to Shane's longtime coach, Neil Manchip from Edinburgh, who's looked after him for many, many years. chat on Tuesday ahead of this open and he obviously said the right things <laughs> well done Tommy he makes his four he must be just a little deflated though <laughs> September. And talking to Neil Manship, Thomas points out quite rightly, as does Susan Simpson from the Arity who's with us, that Neil also looks after James Sugru, the amateur champion from Ireland who won at uh, Port Marnock just a few weeks ago and played in this Open and played in the opening group with Darren Clark. What a few weeks for Irish golf. Okay, that's lovely. Thank you very much for me. I've always wondered, Doogie, who gives the go-ahead? And she's right, go, engrave. Oh, that's a, that's a serious executive decision. That must be, that'll be Martin Slumbers, I'm sure. And get the spelling right. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, in this yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. 
Isn't that a glorious picture looking out over there. Port Rush Bay to Dunluce Castle there. in the background, all the way around to the, the Giants Causeway? Not as nice a picture as that leaderboard in the bottom right hand corner. Got a box. Well, it's been a dream week, and we're about 15 minutes away from the absolute dream finish. Shot from Tommy Fleetwood. Yeah, the atmosphere out there is just unbelievable. Don't think they could ever dreamt of this. <laughs> they all had the dream of probably Rory McIlroy winning this championship, but it's Shane Lowry's day. Yeah, 93, 92, 91, 190. And one of the greatest things about this this week is that these Irish fans have given everyone a tremendous welcome, a great ovation as they walk up to 18, especially the Irish lads and the British lads, of course, but everyone has been made to feel so welcome. Brooks Kepka holds out for a 74. He finishes inside the top four. That's another stunning major performance by Brooks Kepka. Not quite able to add to his four wins in the last two years, but what a player Brooks Kepka is in the game's greatest challenges. And you can only feel for JB Holmes, who slumped to an 87, finishing double bogey, double bogey. And that's a pretty shattering blow, and from being tied for the lead after that, he says JB Holmes is now 67. Now let's enjoy this walk with Shane Lowry. This and these are moments that he and everyone else in Irish golf will never forget. Now he's such a a likeable and a popular character, Shane, isn't it? I think everyone, in. not just Irish golf, but European golf will be absolutely delighted for him. Pretty speechless with all of this. It's almost overpowering. Thanks, too. Yeah. I haven't shed a tear many times on golf, but if you get close here, that's for sure. This is a, an emotional occasion for so many people, but especially for Shane. Well, if you're beginning to go, Thomas, there's no chance for Torrance and I. I'm done. <laughs> I've joined in. Everything's been playing so long. I know, I know, you're right, baby. See, you like Nelson, I don't know, yeah. Yeah, good, but stop playing for the Just look around, savour it all, remember these moments, as if you could ever forget. 
shot. I like it a little bit off. The wind's going to push it off the pin, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You want the pin there? Yeah. The pin's on I right of the top of the pin. Come on. Still a finish with a good swing, yeah. Let's not forget yeah. Tommy Fleetwood here. He's had a, a little wonderful bit off Open it. Championship. He's trying to finish this off. Wait, wait. Still just 28, Tommy Fleetwood, he'll have plenty more chances. Today, second is the best he can do. something and shared something very, very special. Brendan can relax. Shane and Wendy get married in New York just after the 2016 Masters. And I have little Iris. And what a party they are going to have. And 
Bartholomew, of course, will observe the age-old tradition. He will hole out and leave the stage to the champion. to finish around the 74 he finishes at nine under second in the open we go along with his second place finish in the US Open last year but now it's all about the winner I think July 21st will be a national holiday from now on Couldn't, could he? He very nearly did. Shane Lowry is the Open champion. The return of the Open to Royal Port Rush has been an absolute triumph. And just to set the seal on an unforgettable week, an Irishman has won in a row. Tuesday, that's the right word. They met for a pint, I think, in the village of Bushmills along the coast. Because Shane was feeling a little bit stressed, a little bit worried about the week. He knew how much it meant to Irish golf. And they just sat down and had a chat for 45 minutes. And afterwards, Shane said he came out feeling much more relaxed, much more happy. It's nothing to do with his swing or any technicality. It was just about how do we approach the week. 
How could they have imagined that it would have ended with these amazing scenes? The final leader, but what Shane Lowry, 15 under par, wins by six from Tommy Fleetwood. Tony Finnow takes third. Lee Westwood and Brooks Kepka tied for fourth. Look Top that forward scene. around the 18th at Royal Port Rush. Well, the Open will be back here before too very long. And we'll be back many times, I'm sure. That was the moment. scripted this, could you? The return of the Open to Royal Port Rush and an Irish winner. The final leaderboard, Shane Lowry, the Open champion, 15 under par, a win by six from Tommy Fleetwood. Finna third, Westwood and Kepka tied fourth. Bob McIntyre, the young Scot in his Open debut, 68 for a tie for sixth with Tyrrell Hatton, Danny Willett and Ricky Fowler. Patrick Reed makes up the top ten. It's been a difficult final day, but a joyful one. Francesco Molinari, the defending champion, hands back the claret jug, hands it over to Shane Lowry, and does so with a bogey-free 66 on a tied 11th finish. Stuart Sink, the 2009 champion, finishes with a 70. Jordan Spieth, the winner, two years ago. Henrik Stenson, the Troon champion in 2016. All high on the final leaderboard here in Ireland. Great week for the English qualifier, Andrew Wilson. Came through final qualifying, finishes tight 32nd, beating a lot of the biggest names in the game. tell from some of those scores though just what a tough day it has been at Royal Port Rush. All credit to Shubanka Sharma from India. 68, there weren't too many sub-70 scores. Ashton Turner, he was first out this morning playing with a marker. Shot 68. Graham McDowell, the one remaining Northern Irishman. Worked so hard to make sure he was here for this great celebration.
unforgettable scenes and there the the respect and the affection between two fellow professionals Graham McDowell congratulating Shane Lowry the open champion he'll never tire of hearing that description right any of you guys able to stop yet Got a bit of paper I'll write and stuff and you can read it. Uh, we've gone through it a few Kleenexes <laughs> in this comms box, that's for sure. It's just been wow, emotional. How are you? It's great performance. Well done. How are you? Well done. Very well done. How are you? I'm. I can't believe what's just happened. Good calls from Lee. Can't believe it. Well, it's an obvious point, guy. I'll get you through it. So just take a few minutes to gather your thoughts and listen. Okay. We've got some little guide notes. Just a bit of a memory aid for the for the speech. So okay. yeah. just gather your thoughts and uh, I'll take you out when we're ready. Uh, we'll do the presentation party. I'll introduce you. Quick chance to say a few words and then quite a lot of photographs. And I'll just. So just look for me when you're, when you're perfect. As if he hasn't been through enough, he's never going to make a speech. Um, what's <laughs> in there? got some water on here, basically. Oh, I'll just I'll have some water. Yeah. Yeah. It's got really the best, me, best speech you're ever going to make, though, <laughs> <I> do. <laughs> That's what you have done. Come on, Shin, you're not going to have a cold. Food salad here. Do you want some num nums? Oh, nice. Daddy's duties oh. never end. Honestly, I Unbelievable when I had the open nice champion, but he's a dad first and a husband first. And I had my t-shirt at 7 a.m. That's when I knew it was over. Yeah. That was not, I didn't know it was over from there. Anyway. Like. Hey, Unreal is that man's hair as well, isn't it? Trying to put him in the shirt. I don't think I should wear this for a photo. Mommy, look out. I don't care if I'm cold. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? You're not wearing the legs. You're left. 100% right. 100% right. They seem remarkably calm, the pair of them, don't they? Calmer than we are in the comms box, I, I want to so. tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and he walked into that room and says, I can't believe what's just happened to you. can't believe it. Shane. How on earth are we supposed to believe it? So now one of Gull's favourite ceremonies, the presentation of the old claret jug to the champion golfer of the year. And it all started in Prestwick in the west of Scotland in 1860. Eight players, no prize money. They played 12 holes three times, and it was won by Willie Park Senior with old Tom Morris second. Would you believe it? All these years later, the 148th Open is now a worldwide phenomenon. It has returned this year to Royal Port Rush for the first time in 68 years. And then the absolutely perfect ending to a great story. An Irishman has won in Ireland. Still trying to take it all in. Uh, all he's thinking now is, who have I got to thank? Please don't let me forget there. anyone. You're going to be in my house now, Mike. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. We're back after 68 years. So a big welcome to our presentation ceremony. Special thanks to you all for adding an Irish welcome to an incredible Open. And by you all, I mean the 237,000 of you who came to watch the golf this week. My name is Clive Brown, Chairman of the Championships Committee. Crucial to the success of this week has been the standard and presentation of this links. I want to thank Graham Beat and his team 
for presenting the course in such magnificent fashion. I also want to thank John Bamber, all at Royal Port Rush, and the multiple agencies in Northern Ireland who've helped us. Thank you for working with us to stage the Open, and for your huge commitment, your untiring support, and your boundless enthusiasm. There are also thousands of volunteers who help run the Open. So a big thank you to every one of those as well. And finally, to the players. What can I say? We all want to play golf like you. I'm now going to hand over to Martin Slimbers, Chief Executive of the RNA, and Robert Barry, Captain of the Royal Port Rush Golf Club, who will present the Claret Jug. Thank you. Thank you, Clive. With a score of 269, the winner of the gold medal and the champion golfer of the year is Shane Larry. can I say? Uh, I just have so so many people to thank, really. Um, first of all, I'm going to uh, the RNA for such a great event. Um, you know, to have an open championship here on the island of Ireland in Royal Port Rush Golf Club is just amazing. I've got, I, I love this place. It's one of my favourite places in Ireland, and uh, to be able to come up here and play an open championship was great. And uh, yeah, so to um, I suppose. I have a lot of people in my backroom team that I have to thank, um, and I'm, you know, my coach Neil, um, my caddy Bo, my management, um, you know, everybody. Just uh, I, I wouldn't be, I definitely wouldn't be standing here without them. Um, My, my family, um, what can I say, my mum and dad. They sacrificed so much for me when I was younger and I'm so happy that I can hand them this trophy tonight. My wife and my little girl, Iris, um, to have them here today is just extra special. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know what to say. Um, last, last but not, le not least, uh, the volunteers and all the fans. I mean, thank you so much. Uh, this one's for you. Congratulations, Shane, on your wonderful performance. After such a successful championship here at Royal Port Rush, we look forward to seeing you next year at Royal St George's. 
In the meantime, please stay with us to celebrate your Open champion, Shane Lowry. Magical, magical moments for Shane Lowry and for everyone here at Romaport Rush. What a final day, what an open championship week. Let's get some final thoughts from my colleagues in the box, starting with, with Thomas Bjorn. You've enjoyed it, Thomas, haven't you? No, no, I can't remember an open championship I've enjoyed as much as this one. It really has been sensational from day one all the way to the finish. Obviously, this is the best possible things for, for returning to the island of Ireland. And just so thrilled for Shane and his whole team. So talented for so many years. And this is just, I can't even, I can't even describe how I think this moment is for him and for all of the people here. They're so proud of their golfers and it's got to be their favourite moment of all time. Five major champions in the last 12 years from this small island, Sam. It's quite astonishing, isn't it? Oh, beyond belief, Doogie, that's just so special. So that's me. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Always appreciate your input. Uh, Tony? <laughs> well, Doogie, you know, there's been so many winners. Obviously, Shane Lowry, but Royal Port Rush, Port Rush Town, the RNA. I mean, it, this has been just a spectacular open championship and please don't let this be another 60 how many years to come back here it has just been absolutely fabulous well all across the world people will have heard the name of royal port rush but they've very possibly never seen this great links so now they've seen it now they can't fail to have been hugely impressed and what a wonderful finish. An Irish winner by all of six shots. <laughs> 2019 began for Shane with a win in the first of the Rolex Series events, the Abu Dhabi Championship. His fourth win of a career which began so dramatically as an amateur when he won the Irish Open in 2009. A World Golf Championship winner. Now he's an Open Champion. Now it's the oldest and the greatest championship of all. And this has been one of the memorable Opens. He was so calm all day. That back nine, the shots he hit, just shot after shot after shot, no mistakes. I think we should spare a little word for the the fans this week too, the spectators, Doogie. They have just shown enthusiasm, respect for the players, for, for themselves. I don't think you could get a better bunch of fans anywhere in the world. Well, I saw something this week that uh, the World Golf Championship should certainly be coming to Ireland at some point in the future in front of those marvellous fans. They certainly have the golf courses. And, of course, the RNA have done their usual immaculate job of staging this great championship. The course setup was absolutely perfect. The weather, well, it might have been nicer, but it's very much a part of the whole open experience.
Look at that smile. The dream of every young golfer to one day hold the claret jug and look back to all the names from Willie Park in 1860. Through the all-time greats of the game, the names are all in the claret jug. And now right at the bottom it'll say 2019 Shane Lowry. Well, it's been a long, long wait for the Open to return to Royal Port Rush. It has been an absolute delight, and I don't think it will be anything like 68 years before we're back here again. Well, there we are. Wherever you've been watching us around the world for the last four days, I'm sure you've enjoyed a, a very special Open Championship. Congratulations to Shane from all of us in Northern Ireland. Thanks for being with us. Bye for now.